Highball and Chain, a mafia romantic comedy. Bourbon Street Bad Boys Club, book two. Written by Catherine M. Hurst. Narrated by Virginia Rose and Aaron Shedlock. Chapter One, Shauna. Cinderella never doubted her social skills. A new dress and glass shoes gave her all the self-confidence she needed to walk in and dance with the prince. Too bad I didn't have a fairy godmother or a pumpkin carriage to get me through my best friend's engagement party. Who am I kidding? It's going to take a lot more than pixie dust to survive tonight. I'd rather have a root canal than spend a night hobnobbing with New Orleans rich and infamous. Then again, high society events and dentistry had a lot in common. Both were agony made barely tolerable by copious amounts of numbing agents. Don't get me wrong, I was happy for the newly engaged couple. They'd managed to do the impossible, find love. Me? I'd long since stopped believing in knights in shining armor riding in on white horses to save the day. Heck, if my prince ever did arrive, he'd be a misogynist pig, and his noble steed would shit on my lawn. Nope. I didn't believe in love and romance any more than I believed in fairy tales. I'd learned to doubt men when my father left. My doubt had solidified into a cynical distrust when I started working for a private investigator. I loved my job, most of the time. Tonight, not so much. Two hours hiding behind a planter in a hallway of the Bourbon Orleans Hotel could do that to a girl. If I didn't shoot some video of the mayor and his flavor of the week soon, I'd never make it to Maggie and Gabe's party on time. Over the previous few days, I'd photographed the elected official with a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. Variety was the spice of life, after all. Tonight's spice was an Amazonian woman with dark hair and legs that belonged in the WNBA. Most of the good citizens of New Orleans knew their mayor was a cheating piece of crap, but I needed proof. So far, I'd filmed them exchanging documents and what I assumed were envelopes of cash. However, Mrs. Carter wasn't interested in her husband's dirty politics. Pictures might be worth a thousand words, but for me, an incriminating video was a month's rent and the difference between pasta at Antoine's and ramen noodles. The mayor and the brunette exited their room without as much as a boob graze, but I took a couple of photos to document the time. I hiked my bag higher and strolled down the hall. My boss had taught me the key to maintaining one's cover was to blend in, act like you belonged, and deny, deny, deny. Alex was a top-notch private investigator, but he knew squat about being a female in a male profession. As such, I took a slightly different approach. I stood out and acted like I didn't give a flying fig. The couple stepped into the elevator. I picked up my pace and jammed a size eight Doc Martin in the closing doors. Once inside, I ignored their frowns and swiped right to activate my smartwatch spy camera. Aiming the lens at the couple, I pretended to scroll through my phone and prayed for him to break his freaking vows. Jefferson Carter, father of three and husband of 26 years, did not disappoint. He kissed the Amazon like he was trying to eat her face off. Seriously, I'd seen cows chewing cud with more finesse. The recording rolled the entire time. Gotcha, asshole. The elevator stopped and we stepped out. The mayor and the woman turned right while I faked a left and ducked back once they were out of sight. Peeking around the corner, I eased my watch into position and continued to record them. After all, when proving infidelity, quantity often trumped quality. The brunette's eyes went wide. Hey, stop. Busted. Carter didn't scare me, but his playmate looked like she could pick me up and toss me out the window without chipping her nail polish. I made a break for the exit and didn't stop until I reached Royal Street. Heart pumping, thigh muscles screaming, I bent at the waist to catch my breath. The bells of St. Louis Cathedral chimed seven times, reminding me I was late for Maggie and Gabe's party. 
The Marchioni Guthrie nuptials would take place in Sicily, but the couple's mothers had strong armed them into holding a pre wedding event, a black tie event. My jeans and t shirt weren't going to cut it. Lucky for me, I'd been a Boy Scout in a former life. Always be prepared. I headed down Royal and ducked into Landry and Sons Antiques. The owner, and one of my oldest friends, glanced up from his paperwork. Shauna, what a surprise. Sarcasm doesn't become you, Jack. I pointed to the back room without slowing my pace. He might or might not have groaned, not that I cared. I had places and people and all that jazz. Five minutes later, I emerged from the stock room in a vintage dress that would make Jackie Kennedy drool and a pair of secondhand Jimmy Choo knockoffs. How do I look? He quirked a single brow and motioned for me to turn, wrinkled. I smoothed the fabric over my hips. It was in my bag all day. Jack, bless his heart, walked to a jewelry case and pulled out a necklace. Here, put this on, and no one will notice the dress. The thing looked like it cost more than my car. I can't. What if I lose it? It's insured. He motioned me closer. A girl has to look the part, even if the girl lives on a dental floss budget. I turned my back to him. The term is shoestring. Honey, in your case, it's more like thread. Jack fastened the necklace and spun me around. Gorgeous. But you're late. I know, I know. I was working. I zipped my backpack and hoisted it to my shoulder. Leave the bag, he pointed at my wrist, and the watch. I can't, I don't have a purse, and this dress doesn't have pockets. I batted my lashes. And without my watch, how will I know how many steps I've taken? This time, Jack did groan. One of these days, I'll make a girl out of you. Laughing, I handed over my backpack and spy watch. It's woman. And no thanks. Well, you're all woman tonight. His voice came out somewhere between strangled and breathy. I turned and caught him checking out my ass. That's new. Thanks, Jack. I have a gold brocade bag in back that will match the embroidery on your dress. I'd wasted another 10 minutes. But Jack had hooked me up with an antique clutch and earrings. Thanks, you're the best. I planted a kiss on his cheek. So you keep saying. He looked me over as if I were one of his antiques. Remember, be polite, smile a lot, and for God's sake, don't talk about religion or politics. Not a problem. I don't plan on talking to anyone except Maggie and Dahlia, and all we gab about is sex. I checked my reflection one last time. Thanks to the ball cap I'd worn on the stakeout, my hair stuck out at odd angles. I smoothed the short pieces in hopes of achieving an Audrey Hepburn vibe. Live a little, branch out, cozy up to one of the Marchioni brothers before they're all married off. He sounded like he'd swallowed something foul. No freaking thank you. If you're so interested in the Marchionis, you should come to the party as my plus one. Jack lowered his brows. Unless you're proposing a threesome, I'll have to pass. Now there's a mental picture I'll never be able to unsee. In all honesty, Jackson Landry had it going on in the looks department, but he was like a brother to me. The thought of him getting busy with anyone, male or female or anything in between, gave me the heebie-jeebies. As for the Marchionis, they could bump uglies with whoever they wanted as long as it wasn't me. He wrapped his hands around my upper arms and waited until I met his gaze. Seriously, Shoshana, isn't it time you let someone in besides your cat? Hey, don't you dare besmirch Mr. Bouguer. He's soft, round, and is happy as long as I feed him. He's the perfect man. Stop deflecting. Jack folded his arms. There are men in this world who would never hurt you if you'd only give them a chance. I know, but if I set the bar any lower, I'll have to bury it. Best guy friend or not? I didn't have time for this conversation. I have dated, and I've learned battery-operated boyfriends are a better bet. Less disappointment. You're deflecting again. Bye, Jack. I shook my head and exited the shop. I didn't hate men or anything. 
I just didn't have much luck playing the dating lottery. I'd shared a few magical hours with Enzo Marchione, a card-carrying member of the Bourbon Street Bad Boys Club. After which, I'd spent my nights on the phone and my days texting with him. For a brief, shining moment, I'd thought we had a connection. Enzo asked me to dinner, but he'd canceled and ghosted me like a bad Tinder hookup. A few days later, I'd caught him with an Italian supermodel type. Fool me once, and I'll never give you the chance to do it again. Heels clicking on the uneven sidewalk, I hurried toward Enzo's, as in Lorenzo Marchione, a.k.a. The Ghoster. It made sense he'd host his older brother's engagement extravaganza, but I'd rather have eaten out of trash cans than set foot in his restaurant. The things we do for our friends. I'd agreed to be Maggie's maid of honor the second she'd asked. A few moments later, I'd realized my duties would entail seeing a lot of Enzo and rubbing elbows with Nola society. Not that my friends and I belonged to the upper crest, or lower for that matter. We lived in the middle of the pie between the chunks of chicken and peas. I rounded the corner and groaned. It looked like a luxury car dealership had exploded in front of the restaurant. As I'd predicted, the engagement party was the social event of the season. Squaring my shoulders, I weaved my way through the cars and guests. Maggie, the bride-to-be, climbed out of a limo. Shauna, perfect timing. I gave her a quick hug and found myself one breath away from a wardrobe malfunction. Strapless dresses weren't invented for women with B-minus cup sizes. You look gorgeous. She looped her arm with mine. I took in her flowy pale blue dress and matching heels. Thanks, so do you. Where's Gabe? Something came up at work. He's meeting me here. Maggie squared her shoulders and raised her chin. She might have tried for calm, cool, and collected, but I knew better. The woman was as nervous as a cat in a dog yard. I squeezed her hand. You got this. I'll feel better once I'm inside. Morning sickness? More like morning, noon, and night sickness. Are you going to survive a transatlantic flight tomorrow? I hated to think of her spending the trip from New Orleans to Sicily in an airplane bathroom, even if said bathroom was on a private jet. Or flying at night. I plan to sleep unless this little one has other ideas. She rubbed her slightly bulging belly. After two months of listening to Maggie describe the early stages of her pregnancy, I had absolutely no desire to experience motherhood. You had to know this baby would be a pain in your butt. Look at its father. Be nice. Laughing, Maggie slapped my arm. And relax. You might actually enjoy yourself tonight. I doubt it. I'm not comfortable around these people. All of this wealth makes me break out in hives. She lowered her voice to a conspirator's whisper. They aren't all bad. So you keep telling me. Maggie was right. They weren't all bad. I'd changed my mind about her fiance, Gabe, after he'd proven himself to be a stand-up kind of guy. Though he'd broken her heart years before, he'd proved that some bad boys can morph into good men. I mean, seriously, it took a spine of steel to raise five kids, three of whom were not his. Too bad his younger brother hasn't emerged from his cocoon as a hot, successful butterfly with a heart of gold. The moment we walked inside, people swarmed the bride-to-be. I took the opportunity to slink away and find the bar. No way could I get through the night without alcohol. Shauna. The man's voice made my toes curl and my hands ball into fists. I turned, ready to give Enzo Marchione the brush off of his lifetime, but stopped short. Enzo hadn't said my name, Gabe had. Great, not only did the brothers all look alike, evidently they sounded alike too. The groom-to-be took a step back and raised his hands. Easy, tiger. Sorry, thought you were someone else. Aren't you supposed to be at work? I've been dealing with a situation. I turned my attention to the bartender. I'll have a Sazerac, make it two. Should you be drinking absinthe? I noted the tension in his jaw and his rigid posture. Don't tell me you're nervous. About the wedding? No, 
Gabe dragged his hand over his mouth and chin. I need a favor, a big one, but you can't say anything to Maggie until after the party. Unless it has something to do with a gift or the super secret honeymoon plans, it's far more serious than that. He lowered his voice, possibly life and death. I gave him a yeah right look. Did he really expect me to keep secrets from my best friend since high school? Go on. He glanced over the crowd as if he'd changed his mind, sucked in a breath and whispered, someone poisoned the minestrone. Before I could make sense of what he'd said, I spotted the Amazonian I'd photographed with Mayor Carter. The woman met my gaze, you. I grabbed Gabe's arm and pulled him toward the kitchen. Let's go investigate your poisoned soup. Chapter two, Enzo. This is madness. I stood in the center of the kitchen surrounded by absolute chaos, and I loved every second of it. While I could do without the contaminated soup, there was no place I'd rather be than in my restaurant in complete control. I was the sorcerer's apprentice waving a baton to command floodwaters of his own making. Head bowed, I listened to my assistant manager run through the revised menu for the evening. Not only had someone sabotaged the soup, the incident had sent the kitchen staff into panic mode. I stopped her before she launched into alternative soup options. Substitutions will take too long. We go with what we have. Her eyes widened and the color drained from her face. But sir, what am I missing? I'd hired Hazel before the restaurant opened its doors. I trusted her implicitly. If she was worried, I had a problem. We plan for soup or salad. We don't have enough greens and fruit prep to serve all 250 guests. Son of a bitch. I had too much riding on this party to let something as inconsequential as pears and gorgonzola screw it up. I drew a deep breath and forced myself to speak at a normal volume. Tell the prep crew I'll pay bonuses if they get it done in the next 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Hazel spun around and ran directly into an enormous rack of pre-plated salads. I witnessed the catastrophe in slow motion. Pears, field greens, and heavy stoneware dishes crashed onto the tile, along with Hazel. She clutched her arm to her chest and went as white as my chef's coat. Are you all right? I knelt before her and picked chunks of cheese from her hair. My wrist. She looked down and swayed to the side. I caught her before she managed to do any additional harm to herself. A quick glance at the unnatural angle of her hand told me she'd broken something. My vision went blurry, but I refused to pass out in front of my staff. Instead, I averted my gaze, pulled her closer, and shouted, Someone call 911. I don't need an ambulance. Her voice shook. I disagreed. No way in hell would I allow her to suffer. What's one more screw up in my family's eyes? I'll drive you. Can you make it to my car? What about the party? Hazel shook her head. It killed me to imagine my father's disapproval if the dinner went sideways, but Hazel's health had to take priority. Your well-being is more important. I appreciate the offer, but someone else should drive me. I'll take her. Tara, one of my longtime servers, stepped forward. Helping Hazel to her feet, I said, thank you. Please stay with her and keep me informed. She has my personal cell number. I'll pay you double time for the entire night, but please stay with her. You don't have to do that. Tara dipped her chin and stared at me through her lashes. Should I expect you at the hospital later? My brain short-circuited. She'd worked for me for years without a hint of flirting. I made a mental note to keep an eye on the situation. If it continued, I'd have to fire her. What the hell else can go wrong tonight? I'll be tied up here for hours. Just call me when she's out. I'll be fine, Enzo. Stop worrying and focus on the food. Hazel shambled toward the service exit. Her slow, unsteady gait concerned me. Normally, my assistant manager had two speeds, fast and Mach 5. I waited until the back door closed and frowned at the ruined salads. Everyone, listen up. We're skipping the antipasti and going straight to the first course. The sous chef called out. You heard the boss. Serve the pasta with pesto and pecorino romano. I walked into the cooler to check the desserts. The cold, sugar-tinged air felt good against my face and reminded me of Shana. I should never have canceled our date. Better yet, I should have manned up and told her the truth. Right, because every woman dreams of a man telling her he's enamored with her, but the relationship can go nowhere. Grinning like a kid at a candy buffet, a busboy poked his head inside the cooler. Enzo, 
Someone's asking for you at the service door. I figured his goofy expression meant the person asking for me was female, likely a hot female. It wasn't unusual for patrons to ask to see the chef. Maybe Shauna had decided to leave the party and check in. The mere thought made my pulse race. I hadn't been so ass over tea kettle for a woman since high school. Another reason I should put her out of my mind. If it was only that simple. It's the second woman I've let in tonight. The kid shook his head. Must be good to be the king. I ignored his comment. The last thing I needed were my employees thinking I had a revolving bedroom door. In the future, don't let anyone in the kitchen unaccompanied. In case you missed it, someone poisoned the soup. His eyes widened. I didn't think about that. She was tall with long dark hair, Italian accent. I figured you knew her. Regardless, we don't allow guests in the kitchen. I nodded to the service door. Tell whoever's waiting, I will be right up. The kid hung his head and turned to leave. Before he reached the exit, the door swung open and the last person I expected, or wanted, to see strode in. Enzo. Nicolina hair kissed both cheeks and wrinkled her nose. You are so sweaty. What the hell is she doing here? The last time I'd laid eyes on her, she'd given me the finger and a nice view of her ass before slamming the door. I work in a kitchen, Nico. What do you expect? I expect you to smile when you see me. She flipped her long, dark hair over her shoulder. I would smile, but I was certain it had come across as a snarl. Why are you here? I'm in the middle of work. I came to surprise you. I've missed you. She ran her hand over my cheek. Missed me? I'd all but packed her bags and put her on a plane back to Paris when she'd shown up unannounced after the gala. Nothing's changed. Nico pushed her lower lip out. None of that matters. It's your brother's engagement party. You shouldn't be working. Come, join me. I can't. We're short-staffed. I need tonight to be perfect. Or as perfect as it could be after the rocky start. She folded her arms. Still trying to please your father? I ignored the jab. I have to get back to work. I came all the way from Paris and you can't find time for me? You should have called. So you've said, but I'm here now. Her tone grated my ears. I'll join you for a drink after dessert is served. I ducked into the prep area before she could argue. Why here? Why tonight? We'd known each other since we were kids. At my mother's urging, we'd gone out on a few dates years before. The time we'd spent together had sucked to the point I'd told her I didn't want to see her anymore. Nico, being Nico, disagreed. She followed me. Don't be ridiculous. We should be seen together. I don't see why. I had to get rid of her so I could focus. Stinking of onions and garlic and sweat, I threw my arm around her designer-clad shoulder. We're friends, nothing more. Which of us is being ridiculous? She pushed me away. You're filthy. Get cleaned up before we see your parents. There is no we, and I've already seen my folks tonight. In case you missed it, Gabe just got engaged. I'm not getting sucked into that conversation with my mother. Again. Nicolina grabbed my chef's coat and yanked me closer. You're not getting any younger. Maybe it's time you started thinking about settling down. Here we go again. I hated to hurt her, but I'd already made myself clear on the matter. We've had this conversation. I am settled down. I'm happily married to my restaurant. Nico lowered her voice to a purr. You need someone to take care of you, to remind you what it is to laugh and enjoy life. I laugh. Her words puzzled me. She'd never shown any desire to take care of anyone except herself. Honestly, Enzo, why do you work so hard? It's not like it's your restaurant. It belongs to your father. Why doesn't he hire someone to run it? My name is on the sign. I jerked free of her. It's mine in every way that matters. When will you learn? Nothing you do will make your father proud. She had the audacity to bat her lashes after she'd verbally kicked me in the balls. Nico might have known me well enough to play me like a keyboard, but she'd forgotten familiarity went both ways. When will you learn to stop causing drama to get your father's attention? I have learned. I've grown up since we dated. I'm living my own life. Isn't it about time you did the same? I'd heard enough. Time to cut to the chase. Why are you here? Is it so hard to believe that I missed you? Yeah, it is. She threw her hands up. Your mother called and told me about Gabe's engagement. It got me thinking about you, about us. I nodded. 
This I could understand. Women tended to freak out when someone got married, pregnant, engaged. It started their clocks ticking or some shit. What I didn't understand was why my mother had called her, of all people, Nico. She slid her arms around me and pressed her face to my chest. I've loved you since I was ten years old. Listen, I kept my hands at my sides. We've tried. I was little more than a child. And you're still acting like one. I don't mean to hurt you, but I'm not interested. I don't believe you. She narrowed her eyes. Unless there's someone else. Shauna danced across my mind. I should have called her. Had I reached out, I suspected I'd have a different answer to Nicolina's question. There's no one else. I'll stay for a week, spend time with you, see how things go. I scanned the ceiling. God, if you're listening, I could use some divine intervention. You think we can stand each other for a week straight? Likely sensing she'd won the argument, Nicolina grabbed my face. We can, if we spend most of it in bed. A sharp intake of breath caught my attention. I turned to find Shauna and Gabe staring. Neither seemed amused. Certain I looked as guilty as I felt, I took a step back. I couldn't stop staring. Shauna's unassuming beauty stole my breath. With very little makeup, a pixie cut, and an embroidered dress, she reminded me of a heroine from one of the old black and white movies my mother loved so much. Nico, good to see you. When did you get into town? My brother stepped forward and kissed her cheeks. If she responded, I didn't hear her over the whoosh of blood rushing behind my ears. Shauna swallowed hard and shifted her weight from one foot to the other. I searched for something to say to her, something that wouldn't set Nico off. Gabe said someone poisoned the soup? She scanned the busy kitchen. Have you called the police? Nico whipped her head toward Shauna like a shark scenting blood in the water. I'd rather not involve the cops tonight and ruin the party. I motioned for her to follow me. Thank Christ. Gabe used his common sense and distracted Nico with wedding talk. Was anyone injured? Shauna glanced from me to the bowl of minestrone I'd set aside. No, it smells horrendous. I doubt anyone would have put it in their mouths. I couldn't stop staring. Why the fuck didn't I call her? Because she scared the ever-loving shit out of me. I'd never connected with a woman so deeply in such a short amount of time. I didn't need a crystal ball to tell me it had end with both of us in pain. She didn't strike me as the kind of woman who'd settle for a fling, and I couldn't give her more. She smirked. If no one was injured, there's not really a problem. I panicked and babbled like an idiot to keep her with me for a few more minutes. The assistant manager slipped and fell. I sent her to the emergency room to get checked out. She's fine. Probably a broken wrist, but fine. Unrelated to the soup, of course. She tripped over the salads. Did someone poison the vinaigrette, too? Shauna smiled and my world tilted. No. I pressed my lips together to force myself into silence. She sniffed the container of soup and jerked back. It smells like nail polish remover, which makes zero sense. How so? If the culprit wanted to make people sick, they would have used something odorless. This seems more like sabotage. You have no idea who did this. No. One of my bussers mentioned a woman stopped in to see me earlier. He let her in the kitchen, but she didn't stick around to speak to me. I see. She glanced back to Gabe and Nico. There's nothing else I can do. You should file a police report. The last thing I needed was cops poking around. Scratch that. The last thing I needed was cops alerting the health department about my acetone soup. I shook my head and focused on the bigger problem, Shauna, and what she'd overheard. Can we talk, alone? Did you lose my number? I tilted my head. No. She patted my cheek. You should. Chapter Three Shauna the plane neared the ground and my stomach nodded, but it had nothing to do with the change in altitude. I hadn't heard from Enzo Marchioni since the case of the tainted soup at the engagement party. Soon, I'd come face to face with the ghoster. Two months of maid of honor duty hadn't lessened the sting of my epic walk of shame. The fact that he hadn't bothered to return my call or texts pissed me off, though I supposed I deserved it. What kind of woman has an almost one night stand with her best friend's fiance's brother? The plane bounced a couple of times as the wheels made contact with the runway. 
Before I could catch my breath, the pilot hit the brakes. I tightened every muscle in my body to resist the forward pull. Dahlia patted my hand. Relax, that was the last landing until it's time to go home. The thought of repeating the trip in reverse made my already aching head worse. After two connections and a total of 20 hours traveling, I wanted a hot meal, a shower, and a warm bed. Thanks for the reminder. She ignored my comment. Peering out the window, I said, I thought the airport was bigger. You're probably thinking Palermo. Comiso is tiny, but closer to the villa. Right, I ground my teeth. Despite the fact the plane had stopped, no one stood. Dahlia rummaged through her bag. I still don't understand why Maggie insisted on having the ceremony in Sicily. So what if the press covered the wedding? One of us should be married in St. Louis Cathedral. You can, when you marry Leo. My knee bounced. Why weren't these people standing? We're just friends. Dahlia scrolled through her messages. Uh-huh. Dahlia and Leo had danced around each other for the previous 10 years, but never officially dated. Though they denied it, I assumed they had sex since Leo was the only man in Dahlia's life besides her one-year-old son. Maggie said the guys are picking us up. Dahlia typed a text message, smiled, and sat back. Which guys? I stood and pulled my carry-on from the overhead bin. Probably Gabe and Leo. Standing hunched over, I waited for the people to start moving. Seriously, how long does it take to open a freaking door? Dahlia twisted her long, dark hair into a messy bun. Shauna, relax, they'll open it soon. They need to hurry the hell up, I'm claustrophobic. I drummed my fingers until the man in the seat in front of me glared. Since when? Since I'm halfway around the world, trapped on an island with Enzo Marchioni? The door opened and the passengers filled the aisle. About time. We picked up our luggage and exited the terminal building into paradise. A steady breeze blew from the Mediterranean, warming my face and lifting my spirits. That is, until masculine laughter filled the air and someone pulled my carry-on from my shoulder. I turn and locked gazes with the ghoster. Here, let me help you. Enzo smiled, his teeth bright against his tanned face. Thanks, but I can manage. I tugged, but he held firm. I insist. For crying out loud, let the man help you. Dahlia handed her bag to Gabe. She's been cranky since we left New Orleans. I'm not cranky. I'm exhausted. I don't know how Maggie made this flight four months pregnant. I left Enzo with my luggage. If he wanted to carry it, he could carry it all. In a private jet, Dahlia smirked. Hey, we offered to bring you two with us. Gabe swung the bags into the back of the SUV. Some of us had to work. I hustled into the front seat. Since Gabe had the keys, I assumed he'd drive. Dahlia and Enzo could share the back. Shauna, do you mind if I sit up front? I get car sick. Dahlia smiled a smile that told me she suffered from motion sickness about as often as I suffered claustrophobia. Enzo chuckled. Best to let her ride shotgun. Gabe's had enough vomit from Maggie to last two lifetimes. Is she okay? Will she be able to get through the wedding? I relinquished my seat and climbed in the back. It's mostly in the morning now. She should be fine. Gabe pulled out of the parking lot. The roads back home were bad, but they had nothing on the bumpy, narrow streets of Comiso. I rested my head against the seat as the shadowed scenery passed outside the window. Where's Leo? Dahlia might have tried for casual, but I detected a hint of worry in her voice. He had some business in Palermo. He's coming in later tonight. Gabe tightened his grip on the wheel. She sighed. What's the plan for the rest of the evening? Ma's making dinner at the villa. We figured you two would be hungry and ready for bed. Gabe turned onto a winding gravel road. Sounds good to me. I caught his eye in the rear view mirror and smiled. Nervous about the wedding? Hell no. Enzo leaned closer than was necessary. If he had his way, they'd already be married. 
my pulse raced, but I ignored it, and him, or tried to anyway. Pretending I couldn't smell his spicy cologne, or feel the warmth of his leg pressed against mine, proved impossible. However, I would not, and could not, allow myself to be the kind of woman who put up with a guy ghosting her because he happened to be sexy as homemade sin. The car bounced hard enough to break an axle, and Enzo took the opportunity to slip his arm around my shoulder. We hit another bump, and I jabbed my elbow into his ribs. Dahlia laughed. How many people are staying at your parents' house? Just the wedding party? Everyone else is in hotels. Gabe stopped before an iron gate and entered a code into the keypad. Lights illuminated the whitewashed walls of Villa de Fiori, otherwise known as the Marchioni compound. Even in the dark, I understood how the house got its name. Villa of Flowers. Ugonvillea covered the walls, and Plumbago filled large beds along the drive. A handful of palms glowed in the exterior lighting, giving the home a tropical feel. Two Italian men stepped out of the front doors. I'd met all the brothers back in New Orleans, but couldn't remember which was Marco and which was Dante. Unfortunately, the Marchioni I wanted to forget cornered me beside the trunk. Enzo leaned close enough, his soft curls brushed my cheek. Shauna, we need to talk. Oh boy, here comes the sorry I didn't call speech. I yanked my suitcase out and set it on the ground. Sure, but we're fine. I mean, we're adults. There's nothing. Enzo! The willowy Italian goddess from the restaurant rushed to him and planted a kiss on his mouth. You were gone for so long. Just when I thought things couldn't be more awkward, I scooted past the couple and grabbed my remaining bag. Prying her off him, Enzo stared at me like a man on the verge of drowning. I turned and walked toward the house. A younger Marchioni, with the same green eyes and dark hair as Enzo, approached me. I'd met all six of the Marchioni boys when Maggie's sister had married the eldest brother, Joe. The next time I'd seen them all in one place had been 13 years later at Joe and Rebecca's funeral. Joe had been the oldest, followed by Maggie's fiance, Gabe. Leo came next, then Enzo, aka the ghoster. The youngest of the brood were Marco and Dante. The resemblance between the brothers amazed me. If it weren't for differences in age, they could have been sextuplets. This one looked to be in his mid-twenties and was built like an Olympic swimmer. Is he Marco or Dante? He reached for my bags. Let me take those. Thanks, I got them. I can't let you do that. He blocked my path. I'll never hear the end of it if my mother sees you carrying those inside. Evelyn Marchioni could make an entire motorcycle club cower with one glance. I've met her. You have a point. He extended his hand. I'm Marco. Shauna. Ah, I remember now. You're the maid of honor. Nice to see you again. I'll take your things upstairs. Go get some food. You look hungry. Thanks. I think. I dared a glance over my shoulder at the obnoxious couple. Enzo scowled and the woman pouted. Not exactly the picture of a healthy relationship. As far as I was concerned, they deserved each other. Inside, the house was as impressive as the exterior. The foyer opened into a large family room with two seating areas and two fireplaces. The kitchen sat on the other end of the room, separated by a wraparound bar. Beyond a wall of sliders lay a huge patio, pool, and a breathtaking view of the sea. Shauna, Maggie called from the stairs. I didn't hear the car. How was the flight? Are you tired? Isn't it beautiful here? Long, I'm exhausted, and it's like a postcard. I drew her into a tight embrace. I'm so glad you're here. I've missed you. You've only been gone a couple of days. I'd never admit it, but I'd missed her too. Seems like forever. Wait until you see the church. It's the same place Evelyn and Papa Joe were married. It's gorgeous, and the locals are so nice. 
Gabe and I are taking the wedding party sightseeing the day after tomorrow and to the Aeolian Islands on Thursday. With the wedding on Saturday, we're going to be busy. Take a breath, Mags. You're making me dizzy. Sorry, I'm just excited and hormonal. Something smells amazing in here. Dahlia hugged Maggie. You look beautiful. Cicely agrees with you. Come, sit, eat, Evelyn Marchioni called from the kitchen. The mother of six boys, she knew how to motivate people with the arch of her brow and the tone of her voice. Where are the kids? I took a seat at a massive table. Zach, Chloe, and Ryan were Maggie's sister's children. But she'd stepped up to raise them when Rebecca died. A year later, Gabe had shown up with Ella, his newborn daughter. My best friend was a better woman than me. I doubted I could handle one of my own, let alone three orphans, the product of my ex's fling, and one on the way. Maggie pressed her hand to her belly in the universal gesture of, I'm pregnant. Chloe, Ryan, and Ella are sleeping. Zach's playing video games with Dante and Papa Joe. Dante, the youngest Marchioni brother, was still in college. I could see him playing with the kids, but I had a hard time picturing the Marchioni patriarch shooting zombies on the Xbox. Evelyn set bowls of steaming shellfish and pasta on the table. Video games, she shook her head. They should be outside in the pool or visiting with us. It's nice that they're spending time together. With Dante away at school, Zach doesn't get to see him very often. Maggie filled her plate. I followed her lead, but avoided the urchin-like critters in the mixture. The scent of garlic made my stomach growl over the chatter in the room, but I waited to eat. Kissing his fiance on the way, Gabe took a seat at the table. Enzo and Marco joined us, but the other woman had disappeared. Thank heaven for small miracles. Nothing like a couple arguing over dinner to give the rest of us indigestion. The bowls went around the table, but no one ate. I waited, hoping someone would put something in their mouths before I lost my willpower and fell on my plate like a rabid dog. The Marchionis, including the soon-to-be one, held hands, bowed their heads, and said, Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive. Dahlia and I exchanged glances and followed their lead. I cracked one eye to find Enzo staring. The corner of his lips curled, and his expression darkened. Through Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Other than what I'd witnessed at Maggie's house when we were kids, I knew next to nothing about Catholics. Even still, I had a feeling it was a sin to look at someone the way he'd looked at me while praying. Manja, manja, Evelyn motioned to us. Eat. Busying myself with my food, I did my best to ignore the ghoster. When I came up for air, all three men stared at me with appreciative smiles. Marco laughed. You must have been starving. Sorry. I took a sip of wine and slowed my pace. Don't apologize. It's refreshing to have a woman at the table who actually eats. Hey, I eat. Maggie tossed her napkin at him. Marco wiggled his brows. Yes, but you're engaged to my brother. In my eyes, you are a Madonna, not a woman. Gabe choked on his wine. You might want to take that back before the Madonna kicks your- Lorenzo, where is Nicolina? Evelyn brought another bowl to the table. This one filled with broccoli rob. Changing into her swimsuit. He kept his head down, but couldn't hide his frown. She needs to eat. She's too skinny. Evelyn shook her head. Marco snorted. Ma's on to something. Maybe Nico's hangry. Evelyn pinched the back of his arm. Ouch, I was joking. There's cannoli in the fridge. Help yourselves. I'm going upstairs. She gave Marco what my booby called the evil eye and turned to go. Good night, Ma. Gabe stood and kissed his mother's cheek. She smiled and pressed her hand to his chest. Sleep well, in your own bed. Even if the mystery is gone, you can save the sex until the honeymoon. Ma? Gabe glanced at his brothers as if expecting backup. The Marconi men laughed, while the rest of us focused on our food. The same goes for all of you. She glared at me. 
What the heck? Good night, Mrs. Marchioni, and thank you for dinner. This is delicious. Dahlia smiled. Evelyn narrowed her eyes, nodded, and went to her room. Enzo waited until she disappeared and lowered his voice. Don't let her get to you. She doesn't think any female is good enough for us. Except you, Maggie. She seems to have changed her mind about you. Only because she has to. Maggie leaned against Gabe. We should all hit the pool after dinner. Marco winked at me. Not freaking likely with Nico Zilla changing into her bikini. I stood and reached for my plate. I'm beat, maybe tomorrow. Leave it, Shauna. I'll clean up when everyone is finished, Maggie said. Marco shot to his feet. Let me show you to your room. I'll take her. Enzo tossed his napkin on his plate and practically vaulted over the table to beat his brother to my side. I should go up too. Dahlia pushed away from the table. Easy, boys. I'll take my friends to their room. Maggie glanced between the men, pointed two fingers at her eyes, and then pointed at them. I'm watching you. Marco plopped into his chair. I guess it's true what they say. Men do marry their mothers, huh, Gabe? Chapter Four, Enzo. Moonbeams and boat lights danced on the Mediterranean Sea. Normally, the villa gave me a sense of peace. In the few days since I'd arrived, Nicolina's constant complaining and arguing had me debating purchasing a Kevlar vest. Enzo, are you listening to me? Nicolina stood with her hands on her hips. Gabe and Maggie glanced my way, and Marco chuckled from the other side of the pool. Of course, Nico makes a scene. Once again, the woman had shown up without warning. When I told her my plans to visit Sicily, she'd called my mother and wrangled a seat on the company jet with the family. Yes, I'm listening. If you are so unhappy with your job, you should look for another or stop working. I'm sure your father would support you. She threw up her hands. I can't quit my job. I'm working for one of the largest fashion houses in the world. Forget it. You don't understand anything that isn't food. I understand that you are unhappy and your boss is trying to get into your pants. I was wrong. You understand food and sex. Beyond that, you're clueless. So feed me or fuck me, but this conversation is over. I cast a quick glance around the patio, praying my mother hadn't heard her. Then again, if Evelyn got a look at the real Nico, maybe she'd get off my back about proposing. There's food in the fridge. Help yourself. I'm not hungry. I'm going to bed. I'll be in the room I'm being forced to share with your cousin. She tapped her foot, as if expecting me to save her. I shrugged. There are rooms at the hotel. Nico stormed inside the house. A moment's peace. Is that too damned much to ask? I needed to speak with Shauna alone, but in a house full of people, a few moments privacy were hard to come by. I laid back and closed my eyes. Marco dropped into the lounger beside me. What's the deal with Shauna? I opened one eye. You mean Nicolina? No, I mean Shauna. Are you hitting that? No, I'm not hitting that. I ran my hand over my face. Gabe and Maggie were within earshot, but appeared too wrapped up in each other to overhear the conversation. Cool, I thought I'd pick something up between the two of you. I didn't want to poach in your territory. She's not your type. First, the incessant flirting, and now this. It had taken every ounce of my willpower not to reach across the table and throttle him at dinner. I stood and grabbed my towel. If I couldn't get a moment alone with my thoughts here, I'd walk to the beach. Since when do I have a type? Marco smirked. Maggie, is Shauna single? Yes, why? Enzo thinks she's not my type. He laughed and shoved my shoulder. See, she's single and attractive. She's my type, old man. Marco might have been two years younger than me, but time and maturity were very different things. I didn't have the patience to deal with an overgrown adolescent. Hey, watch the old man stuff, Gabe shouted. Marco tapped his chin. Unless she's a lesbian. Maggie, is Shauna into guys? Screw maturity. He didn't see me move until it was too late. I put my shoulder to his gut and used my body weight to throw him off balance. Marco hit the water hard and surfaced laughing. Yes, she's straight, but don't ruin my wedding by chasing after the maid of honor. Maggie stepped out of the pool. You guys have some brother bonding time. I'm going to bed. I'm coming with you. Gabe reached for a towel. You heard what Ma said. She'll kill you if she finds you naked before the wedding. Marco called after them. 
Gabe chuckled. I already knocked her up. Why do I need mystery or blue balls? Maggie smacked his arm. Gabriel Marchione. That's it. There's too much testosterone out here. What? It's true? He shrugged. Maggie gave him a dirty look and went inside. Wrapping a towel around his waist, he glared. What's wrong with you two? You should have my back. Sorry, man, but look at the bright side. You won't have to worry about Ma giving you shit between now and the honeymoon. I reclaimed my chair. With any luck, the two idiots would go inside. Gabe sat beside me. What's the deal with Shauna and Nicolina? Nico is Nico. Pain in the ass 99% of the time. He motioned for me to continue. She's a kid. She's the same age as Maggie. Sure as hell doesn't act like it. I finished my wine and set the glass aside. I'm not interested in a life a relationship with Nico would bring. Nico might play at rebelling against her family, but the woman was a mafia princess through and through. If I spent any serious time with her, the Lazios would expect a ring, kids, and loyalty to the family. Gabe stared for a couple beats and nodded. I get that. What about Shauna? I hardly know her. The lie tasted bitter. I hadn't known her long, but what we lacked in quantity, we'd made up for in quality. Until I'd blown it. We met at the gala. Uh-huh. I remember you were too busy to take my call when Maggie was missing. What gives? I nodded toward our younger brother. Normally, I'd rather swallow my tongue than discuss my personal life with him, but he did have inside information where Shauna was concerned. Unfortunately, I didn't dare spill my guts in mixed company. Nothing to tell. A slow smile spread across his face before he glanced over his shoulder. Marco, go get that special bottle of scotch Pops keeps hidden in his study. No way. Last time I took it, I couldn't sit right for a week. Despite his protests, my younger brother walked toward the sliding glass doors. It's a special occasion. Pops will understand. Gabe waited until Marco went inside and turned to me. You're into her. Yes, but what's the point? She's on her way to becoming a private investigator, and I'm up to my ass in mob bullshit. Saying the words out loud felt good. If anyone could understand my predicament, Gabe could. I'm hoping to change that in the near future. He lowered his voice. Don't miss out on a good thing because of the family business. You're a Michelin star chef. You could walk away and get a job anywhere. I said I'm into her, not ready to give up my entire life for her. I couldn't decide if he wanted to give me options or if he wanted me out of his way. Marco returned with a scotch and three glasses. Any last minute requests for the bachelor party? You want a redhead for the road? He poured our drinks. Nah, I'm good. Maggie's all I need. You're such a sap. Still mulling over his advice, I knocked back the whiskey. You sure you're ready to be tied down the rest of your life? Marco leaned against a column and sipped his scotch. Seriously, bro. Are you ready to raise Joe's three, plus your daughter, and another on the way? Maggie didn't ask to raise Joe and Rebecca's kids, but she stepped up when they died. Ella and the one she's carrying weren't planned, but shit happens. But you care about her, right? It's not just about the kids, Marco asked. Gabe refilled his glass. I'd marry Maggie with or without them. It may be hard for you to believe, but I love her. I think you're nuts. I can't imagine sleeping next to the same woman every night until I die. The weight of the lie rested heavy in my chest. I'd never admit it out loud, but I'd consider giving it a try with Shauna. Marriage? No freaking way. But something casual that stretched into years? That I could do. Gabe shrugged. When Ella's mother dropped her on my doorstep and the shit hit the fan with pops, Maggie was there. She gets my work, puts up with this family, and she can cook. I cracked a grin. She completes you? Yes, yeah, smartass, she does. You should be so lucky. My mind drifted to the little pixie sleeping upstairs. It'd take a whole lot more than luck to convince Shauna to give me another shot. Then again, what was the point? Between the restaurant and family obligations, I didn't have time to date. Unless I walked away. Can I handle the guilt of turning my back on my folks? What's up with Dahlia? I know she has a kid, but she's freaking hot. I like the whole dark hair, light skin. Like Snow White turned into a supermodel. Marco wiggled his brows. She's Leo's friend, Gabe and I replied together. What the hell does that mean? No clue, but she's off limits, Gabe said. Well, damn. I turned my head in Marco's direction. You were talking about hitting on Shauna five minutes ago. 
hedging my bets. You guys remember what that's like? Before you needed a little blue pill to get it up? That's it. I jumped up and Gabe followed. We lunged for our brother, and all three of us went into the pool. Several dunkings later, I eased away from the melee. What does Maggie know about the business? More than she should. Gabe lifted himself from the water and sat on the deck. But I assured her I'm running things different now that Pops is retired. Shit, man. What did you tell her? I didn't see eye to eye with Gabe on most things, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to bring women into the mix. The truth. Leo went to negotiate with the Lazios. We won out. It's not like the old days. He had a point. Since the World Trade Center fell, the U.S. government and the European Union had come up with more and more regulations. Moving assets had gone from challenging to nearly impossible, and the penalties for getting caught were steep. While I could get behind his reasons, the logistics concerned me. What's the plan? We'd buy the other families out and go legit. Gabe folded his arms. And if they refuse? I won't take no for an answer. He shrugged. None of us signed up for this shit. We might have been born into it, but we're more American than Sicilian. I should talk to Nicolina. She has some sway with her father. I had a bad feeling. Had anyone asked me before sending Leo to Palermo, I would have protested. Trying to break ties with three generations of Marchionis in Sicily was asking for trouble. Gabe dried his hair. Stop worrying. Pops is aware of what Leo's doing. I wouldn't send him without his blessing. Don't involve Nicolina. Marco choked on his beer. Pops knows you're taking us legit? Yes, he knows. He got on board after Maggie was kidnapped. Frowning, Gabe glanced between us. You were both at the meeting. I'd hardly use the term on board to describe Pop's reaction. I glanced at Marco. Enzo's right. Emotions had run high at the family meeting. Gabe hadn't left much room for discussion. He'd come in, laid his cards on the table, and all but dared us to disagree with his decision. If he planned to take Marchioni Corp legit, it'd take more than Leo throwing money at the Lazios. Pop isn't calling the shots. I am. End of story. Gabe turned for the house. Did the informant the police question say any more about who ordered the hit on Joe? Saying the words aloud made my chest hurt. My oldest brother and his wife had been killed in a car crash nearly two years earlier. Despite my father's insistence, they were murdered. The police had ruled their deaths an accident. It sucked, but life went on. That was until some inmate had claimed he'd tampered with their SUV. No. The right corner of Gabe's mouth twitched. We weren't all that close, but we'd known each other our entire lives. He couldn't bluff here any more than he could at the poker table. My brother had lied. The question was why. Gabe cleared his throat, another telltale sign of his raw nerves. Wake me up when Leo comes home. Will do, Marco sipped his beer. Why didn't he come clean? I leaned my head against the edge of the pool and closed my eyes. The conversation between Gabe and my father at the meeting had bugged me for weeks. Pops had said something about Joe wanting to go legit, but moving too fast and not compromising. Is that what got Joe killed? Who would dare? Better question. If Gabe knows who ordered the hit, why isn't he saying anything? I climbed out of the pool and followed Gabe. Hang on a sec. He turned and stared with the same impatient expression my father had worn most of my life. I'm beat. Whatever this is can wait until tomorrow. I fought my first instinct to get in his face. Anger wouldn't get me the answers I needed. Give me five minutes, in private. Five minutes. The SOB grinned in motion to the path leading toward the gardens. Let's take a walk. Marco's still afraid of spiders. Here is fine. I folded my arms. As long as our little brother stayed out of the conversation, I didn't care if he overheard. Are you sure we can withstand the financial implications of going legit? If we offload anything that isn't turning a profit, yes. What about the other families? What about them? He narrowed his eyes. We launder their money and import their goods. How are they supposed to hide their illegal dealings without us as a front? We're giving notice. Moving slow. They'll figure it out. He hitched a shoulder. Pops agrees with my decision. Never in a million years would I have thought my father would agree to break ties with the mafia. I had a feeling Gabe overestimated his approval and underestimated the impact of his decision on the other families. What about Ma? What about her? 
Gabe frowned. Of course, he wouldn't bother to consider our mother's wishes. How does she feel about the decision to leave the mafia? She will follow Pop's lead. Maybe, maybe not. I knew Evelyn well enough to know she had her ways of manipulating the situation and our father. However, I decided to focus on the more important issues. Who's going to step into the power vacuum we leave behind? What about the people of Kamazo? Don't we have an obligation to them? Leaning closer, he spoke in a harsh whisper. I don't intend to stop charitable contributions, here or stateside. As for who's going to step up, it's not our circus. Not our monkeys, capiche? I understood, all right. I understood he either didn't give a shit or didn't understand the situation. There hasn't been bloodshed between the families in two decades. Gabe winced. I'd cornered him, but for once, I took no pleasure in it. I'm wrong about that, aren't I? Who ordered the hit on Joe? I don't know. Corner of his mouth dipped again. You suspect someone. He made a show of looking at the imaginary watch on his wrist. Time's up. Answer the fucking question. He flipped me the finger over his shoulder and strode into the house. Arrogant prick. Sometimes I wanted out as much as Gabe, but other times I'd step into my father's position in a hot second. It wasn't about the wealth, though there was plenty of it, to have the respect and power my father enjoyed. Unfortunately, Papa Joe had refused my offer, repeatedly. Since Joe Jr. had died, Gabe had become the chosen one. Joe knew the business. Pops had groomed him since he was a kid. Gabe, on the other hand, knew how to run a bar. He was in over his head. Marco rounded the corner with two beers. Thought you could use a cold one. Thanks. I downed half the bottle. How much of that did you hear? Enough? Marco turned and looked out over the sea. His delivery sucks, but he means well. You know what they say about good intentions and paths, don't you? Keep talking to him. He needs to hear all sides. He frowned. Yes, but will he listen? Too much is at stake for any of us to remain silent. Marco, being Marco, could only do serious for a few moments. He glanced back at me and grinned. Hey, bro, Jesse is out with her parents tonight. You might as well go tuck Nicolina in. I have no intention of spooning or anything else with Nico. He held up his hands and walked away. I tended to follow orders and tow the party line, but I couldn't do that with Nico. Not if it meant marrying her. We'd end up killing each other. I could walk away. Forget about all of this and see where things go with Shauna. Chapter 5 Shauna Tourists and locals milled about the little cafe in Old Ragusa. Everyone seemed to be enjoying the gorgeous Sicilian weather. Too bad my friends wouldn't shut up long enough for me to do the same. Okay, spill it. What happened with Enzo yesterday? Maggie sipped her orange juice, though her eyes remained fixed on my espresso. I shrugged. Nothing. When I was pregnant with Gunner, my doctor said I could have a small amount of coffee. Dahlia nudged her mug in front of Maggie. One cup won't hurt the baby. It smells really good, but it didn't agree with me last time. Once you taste something coming up, it never tastes the same going down. Dahlia and I pushed our cups away. What is going on with you and Enzo? Dahlia turned to me. You practically took his head off at the airport. I don't know what you're talking about. I glanced out over the Mediterranean. Did you see that? Maggie pointed at me. Her eye twitched. Dahlia nodded. Yup. I'd had about all I could stand of the two of them. What does that mean? My eye twitched. So what? Maggie leaned closer and lowered her voice. It means you're lying. You've had the same tell since middle school. What's up? Oh my God. She slept with Enzo. Dahlia laughed and clapped her hands. When did this happen? I sank deeper in my chair. Sure, they were my friends, but I was a private investigator in training. I did more acting than most movie stars. How could they read me so easily? As soon as I got back to the villa, I planned to practice lying in the mirror. It didn't, but it almost did the night of the gala. 
Dahlia and Maggie squealed like a couple of senior citizens who'd hit the jackpot at the bingo table. I pointed at my pregnant friend and threw her under the bus. Don't pretend to be shocked. I told you this already. Dahlia's mouth hung open. What else don't I know? Maggie motioned for me to continue. Shauna? That's it. We had a few long conversations after the gala, made plans to go out, and then he ghosted me. It's over and done with, nothing to talk about. Dahlia furrowed her brow. Evidently, I'd popped her romantic bubble. A lot was going on during that time. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure he didn't return my calls. I still don't get it. He doesn't seem like the type. Maggie's frown deepened. Her expression made me nervous. She'd either meddle or confront Enzo to right the perceived injustice. I had to put an end to it before she did something I'd regret. Like I said, we talked a few times after the gala. Either something came up or he decided he wasn't interested. But he hurt you. Dahlia sat back in her chair. Hurt? No. Irritated? Yes. I really needed to change the subject. It's no biggie. He was drunk. I was drunk. Shit happens. Or almost happens. That's crap. Maggie squeezed my hand again. You don't do casual sex. Normally. But I got caught up in the moment. I widened my eyes to stop the twitch and cover the lie. They stared for a few seconds as if expecting me to continue, but I held my ground. What do you two think of Nicolina? Leo said she lives in Paris, but she's dated Enzo off and on for years. Dahlia glanced at us and frowned. You knew that too? Maggie nodded and I sipped my espresso. Honestly, why am I having to pry these things from Leo when you two already have the dirt? The waiter stopped a few feet away as if afraid to interrupt the conversation. Dahlia motioned for him to set our food on the table. Leo doesn't like her. No one likes her. She's awful. Maggie snagged a croissant and slathered on a mountain of butter. Whatever, it's none of my business. I'm over it. I had no way of knowing if Enzo was on or off with Nico the night of the gala. But hearing they'd had a relationship for so long stung. Like a wasp in the eyeball stung. You don't seem over it. You seem pissed. Maggie stuffed the pastry in her mouth, closed her eyes, and sighed. Since evidently I couldn't lie for shit, I shrugged, a noncommittal gesture that neither confirmed or denied my state of mind where Enzo Marchioni was concerned. You like him, Dahlia whispered. Just because he gave me the best orgasm of my life doesn't mean I like him. As soon as the words fell out of my mouth, I regretted them. Maggie nodded with a knowing expression. I thought you said almost slept with him. Newsflash, you don't have to have sex sex to have an orgasm. Thankfully, Dahlia saved me from myself. They must all be gifted in that department. Maggie and I gawked. Dahlia and Leo vehemently denied they'd ever gotten horizontal. The news grossly overshadowed my almost tryst with Enzo. Dahlia waved her hand as if to erase what she'd said. Not that I have personal experience, but every woman I know who has slept with one of them says the same thing. Methinks the lady doth protest too much. I seized the opportunity to take the attention off myself. Just admit it, you and Leo have wild sex. Seriously, Dahlia? How can you expect us to believe you've never crossed the line with him? Maggie laughed. Leo and I have known each other a long time. We are just friends. Dahlia's cheeks turned red. Like you and Jack. Jack's like a brother to me. You and Leo don't exactly treat each other like siblings. She sighed. We're friends, nothing more. After all of this time, you've never even kissed. You are such a liar. Maggie snapped her mouth shut. Leo, Marco, and Gabe approached the table, and joy of joys, Enzo trailed behind them. Dahlia doesn't lie. She twists the truth into a work of art. 
Leo bent and kissed her bright red cheek. What did I miss? Gabe set his hands on Maggie's shoulders. Girl talk, she beamed up at him. Marco plopped down next to me and stole the croissant from my plate. Hey, beautiful. Enzo glared at his younger brother and frowned at me. Screw this. I flashed Marco a smile and wiped a glob of chocolate from the corner of his mouth. Are you my escort for the day? The day, the night, as long as you'll have me. He slung his arm over the back of my chair. Actually, I am your escort. Marco has a final tux fitting. Enzo folded his arms and raised his chin as if the matter was settled. As much as I wanted to call him out for acting like a caveman, I decided to play nice for Maggie's sake. The last thing she needed days before her wedding was more arguing. Great, sounds like fun. My two best friends exchanged glances, but remained blessedly quiet. Paired off in couples, we wandered through the historic section of Ragusa. The beauty of the Baroque city stole my breath. Each nook and cranny presented another sculpture or ornate balcony. Like New Orleans, Ragusa hid its gardens behind stone walls and iron gates. I fell in love with the city. Enzo and I lagged behind the others while I took pictures of every square inch of the place. The fact that my hobby allowed us some alone time was purely coincidental. This way. He took my hand and led me through a narrow alley. Shauna, you should know there is nothing between me and Nico. Struggling to keep up with his long-legged strides, I hurried alongside him. It didn't seem like you two were suited, considering you cheated on her with me. He stopped and turned to face me. I didn't cheat on her. We weren't dating. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I straightened and turned to go. Shauna, wait, please. I should have returned your calls. It's been ages since I, I don't date much. A week turned into two, and I thought it was too late. Nicolina showed, you really don't have to explain. But boy, did I want him to tell me what the hell had happened. I want to. I believe my mother is conspiring with Nico to force me into marriage. He laughed seemingly to hide his involuntary shudder. They will both be sorely disappointed. I have no plans to marry anyone. I love my restaurant far too much to cheat on her with a mere woman. I liked this version of Enzo, the one without the stick up his incredibly firm ass. This was the guy who'd swept me off my feet at the gala. The oddly self-conscious, gorgeous man who'd laughed at himself when he'd spoken passionately about his restaurant. You're saying you cheated on your restaurant with me? I planted my hands on my hips and bit back a smile. I'm saying I made a mistake by letting too much time pass, and I deeply regret it. Apology accepted. I told myself I'd let him off the hook for Maggie's sake, but I knew better. I might not want a white picket fence with the guy, but I enjoyed his company. What was all the yelling about this morning? You heard that? He pointed to another iron gate. I think they heard it in Rome. Peeking inside, I pressed my hand to my chest. Behind the wrought iron, Bougainvillea burst to life in shades of pinks, reds, and purples. I squatted to get a better angle. Careful of the thorns. He rested his hand on my shoulder. How much of the argument did you understand? Not much, but I heard your mother call your father mafioso. Then your father called your mother a Christ killer. He's Sicilian, thus mafioso. She's Roman. Romans killed Jesus. Ah, I see. That makes sense, even to a Jewish girl like me. He whistled. Don't let my mother know. Two things in this world she doesn't understand, non-Catholics and vegetarians. Trust me, I plan to avoid her as much as possible. I walked farther up the stairs and emerged in another palazzo. Was the argument about the wedding? No, not about the wedding. We were arguing about the business. I offered to take my father's position. Gabe never wanted it, nor did Leo. 
He stuffed his hands in his pockets as we ascended more stairs. Nothing in the city sat level. It had more hills than San Francisco. I think you should, if Gabe doesn't want it. Why force a grown man to do something he doesn't want to do? He's the oldest. It comes with the whole Italian, Catholic, Sicilian thing. Enzo slid his arm over my shoulder. That's not only old fashioned, it's ridiculous. None of this came as a surprise to me. I'd helped Maggie research the Marchionis for an article she'd written a couple of months prior. It is what it is. He tugged me closer and kissed my cheek. I knew I should nip his flirting in the bud, but it felt as natural as the hours we'd spent on the phone. What does Marco do? Maggie hasn't told me much about him. Enzo tensed. Should I be jealous? Jealous would imply we are dating. I poked his rippled abs. Which we are not. He gave me an odd look and nodded. He works at Marchione Corp. Started a year ago when he graduated with an MBA and JD. A business and a law degree? Beauty and brains? And here I was, dyslexic and unable to pass the freaking private investigator's exam. Impressive. Do us all a favor and don't tell him that. His ego is large enough already. It's almost as big as Gabe's. Laughing, I stepped into the street to get a photo of the domed cathedral on the hill. A car careened around the corner, and my heart stopped. I had a split second to move, but communication between my brain and my feet ceased to exist. Something slammed into my side with the force of a semi-truck, which made zero sense, considering the direction of the car. Before I could figure out how I'd ended up laying on Enzo's rock-hard body, the bark of gunfire echoed off the buildings. In one quick move, he rolled and tucked me beneath him. Stay down. Was that? He eased back and looked me over. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. My knees burned and my heart raced, but I'd lived. Was that gunshots? Enzo stared after the car. When he turned back to me, the color had drained from his face. Are you sure you aren't hurt? I'm fine. Answer me. Why would someone shoot at us? His frown deepened. It was a backfire. Many backfires. I might not be able to lie to my friends, but I could spot dishonesty in others. Enzo Marchione had lied to me. He pressed his lips into a line and helped me to my feet. We should find my brothers. We caught up with the group in Giardino y Bleo, the city gardens. He pulled Gabe and Leo to the side. Judging by their expressions, he'd told them about the gunshots. Joy of joys, Nico strolled up the sidewalk with Marco. Both carried shopping bags from stores I could never afford. She glanced over the area, glared at me, and sidled up to Enzo. I couldn't decide if he'd lied to me about their relationship, or if Nico was that clueless. Why would a woman who looks like that hang on a man who doesn't want her? I joined Maggie and Dahlia on the palm-lined sidewalk. The garden was beautiful, but I would have preferred to explore it alone, without lies or drive-by shootings. Everything okay? Maggie glanced over to the guys. I debated on telling her the truth, but couldn't do it. This was her wedding trip, not to mention she was pregnant. Shauna? Her voice thinned. He pulled me out from in front of a speeding car. I think it freaked him out. It was probably nothing. Random shots. Maybe it was several backfires. Yeah, right. And Nicolina volunteered with lepers and orphans in her spare time. Are you okay? Dahlia glanced between the men and me. Scared the shit out of me, but I wasn't hurt. Gabe stalked toward us like a man on a mission, or a man whose brother had been shot at. We should all get back to the villa and cool off. I'm not ready to go back yet. I'm having fun, Maggie smiled. He took her hand and pulled her to her feet. We need to meet with the caterers later. I thought you might want to freshen up first. Crap, I forgot. 
Bullets flying or not, I refused to leave Sicily without seeing more of the sights. It's not like anyone's shooting at me. Go ahead without me. I want to visit Donna Fugata Castle. Ugh, not that old sheet hole. I don't care how much they fix it up. It always smells in there. I don't know why they don't tear it down. Nicolina tugged Enzo's arm. Let's go back to the villa and nap. I resisted the urge to roll my eyes. The woman seriously worked my nerves. I'll catch a taxi back to the villa later. I'll escort you. The ghoster stepped away from his whatever the hell she was to him. Nico, go back to the villa with Gabe. I don't want to be there without you. Your mother keeps talking to me about weddings and children. Nicolina grabbed his arm again. Ignore her. My mother doesn't call the shots in my personal life. Enzo glanced at me and raised his chin. What the heck? Don't bring me into this. You sure about that? Marco chuckled. Enzo glared at his brother while speaking to Nicolina. Go. I'll be back before dinner. No, come with me now. She continued talking, but switched to Italian. I caught an odd word now and then, but I didn't need to understand the language to know Nicolina was angry, and Enzo well on his way. Marco pulled me to the side. His easy smile had vanished. You shouldn't be out alone. I have some work to do this afternoon. Come back to the villa with us now, and I'll take you to Donna Fugata tomorrow. As much as I wanted to go exploring, his expression sent a chill down my spine. Maybe he was right. Sightseeing wasn't worth dying over, even if it was an honest-to-goodness castle. All right. Enzo and Nicolina's voices grew louder. Gabe turned to them. Enough arguing. I'm taking Maggie home. You two can come now or call a cab. This doesn't concern you. Nicolina redirected her anger toward Gabe. You're right. He looked past her to Enzo. Figure your shit out. We need to go, now. Maggie took Gabe's hand and he led her away. Nicolina's voice rose in pitch and volume. Am I your shit now? Are you going to let your brother speak to me like that? Enzo dragged his hand down his face. Marco motioned for me to follow him. We'll have fun at the castle of the woman who fled. Is that what it means? I could understand wanting to flee. The situation between Enzo and Nico had reached a pressure reading that threatened to put the destruction of Pompeii to shame. Don't let all the arguing upset you, Marco whispered. I'm used to loud Italians. Your brother is marrying my best friend, remember? We aren't all loud. He kissed my hand and half dragged me to Gabe's waiting car. I'll see you back at the villa. Sitting in the back seat, I watched Marco walk away. I had no doubt getting to know him better would be a blast, but wasn't feeling it. My traitorous heart wanted Mr. Tall, Dark, and Brooding like a dieter wanted processed sugar. Chapter 6 Enzo Nicolina's dark mood seemed to suck the oxygen from the car, but I would deal with her in private. After her reaction to Shauna and the gunshots in the old city, I didn't have the patience to handle the temper tantrum. I'm putting her on a plane back to Paris today, if it's the last thing I do. I slammed through the gears so fast I feared the vehicle would need a new clutch before we made it back to the villa. Marco turned to face me. What has Gabe so worked up? I glanced in the rear view at Nico and shrugged. We'll talk about it later. Talk about it now. At the villa. I took a sharp left onto a narrow road. Why are you going the long way around? Nico leaned between the two front seats. It's the safest route. The more I stalled, the more Marco pressed for answers. What's going on? I kept my eyes on the road. Marco leaned forward and stared until I finally met his gaze. What happened back there? Someone fired shots over mine and Shauna's heads. I tightened my grip on the wheel. She could have been killed. This is exactly the reason I should stay away from her. You were with her? Nico's voice hit an octave normally reserved for sirens and air horns. I didn't reply. Why would someone shoot at you? Her, I can understand, but you? 
Nicolina sat back and laughed. I turned and glared. I need you to be quiet. Go fuck yourself. I gritted my teeth and focused on the road, rather than strangling the principessa of the Lazio family. Marco scrubbed his jaw. Did you recognize anyone? No. Shauna stepped into the street to take a photo when a car came out of nowhere. I pulled her back and heard the shots. The car backfired, silly, Nicolina huffed. No one would come into Marchione territory and try to harm your family or a woman. It was no car. I rolled the implications around in my head. Nico had a point. The Sicilian mafioso lived by a strict code of conduct. This was our mandamenti. No one would dare threaten us in our territory. Why did you promise to take Shauna to Donna Fugata tomorrow? To get her out of there without a fight. He seemed to have more to say, but remained quiet. I eased to the gate and punched the entry code into the box. Then you aren't planning to take her. Nico made a sound in the back of her throat. Why do you care where he takes the American? Because someone shot at us today. I parked and turned to face Nico. I'll take her to the castle, unless Gabe says otherwise. Marco hopped out too quickly for my tastes. Ten to one, he's going to speak with Shauna, the fucker. I stood and rolled my head from side to side to relieve the tension. It didn't work. Nico climbed out of the back seat. He has a crush on your friend. We need to talk. I walked into the house, up the stairs, and down the hall to her room without a backward glance. She'd follow me on her own, or I'd toss her over my shoulder and carry her. Am I in trouble now? She closed the door and ran her fingers down my chest. Will you punish me? I removed her hands. We kissed a couple of times years before, but that didn't give her free reign to touch me now. What's wrong with you? You've been acting like a spoiled brat since you showed up in New Orleans. You treat me like garbage, and then you ask why I'm being a bitch? Brat. But if the shoe fits, I leaned against the dresser. How am I treating you like garbage? I'm sick of your family. You always take their side. You're rude, demanding one minute, ignoring me the next. I do not always take their side, but you've made it difficult to take yours. I folded my arms. Nico, this isn't going to work between us. How can it? You refuse to try, and you've been falling all over yourself since that American got here. Her voice quivered. I knew better than to believe her tears, but I wasn't in the habit of disrespecting women. Moving behind her, I placed my hands on her shoulders. Nico, Shauna doesn't want anything to do with me. But this thing between us, it's got to. Now you lie to me? Say it again. Lie to my face, you bastard. She rounded on me. The woman weighed half as much as I did, but she had the advantage. I'd never strike her, even to protect myself. I'm not lying. I saw you with her. Her eyes narrowed. Your head was between her thighs. I took a step back. How the hell does she know that? What are you talking about? I came to the gala. I wanted to surprise you. She crumpled onto the bed. I paced, she sobbed. The story of our relationship. How could you? If I didn't know her, I'd think I'd broken her. Nico, you and I, there's nothing between us other than friendship. You live in Paris, for fuck's sake. I came to tell you I was ready for you to propose. She sat up and wiped her eyes. Rendered completely speechless, I snapped my mouth shut. I forgive you. Ask me now and I will accept. My brain skidded to a halt. She complained about my mother badgering her into marriage and children. Now she wanted me to drop to one knee? What? No. Think about what you're saying. What about your job? You can come to Paris. Open a restaurant there. She stood and slid her arms around my waist. Or give me a child. I'll quit and we can live here. I'm not going to propose. I tried to soften the rejection by tucking her hair behind her ear. She hit me hard enough, I ran my tongue over my teeth to make sure they were still in place. Because of the American whore? She raised her hand, but I caught her wrist. This has nothing to do with her. I don't want to get married, period. I moved toward the door. You told me you loved me. That stopped me cold. She was playing games, but I didn't understand her objective. Standing with my back to her, I said, Other than my mother, I've never told you or any woman I loved her. You should leave. I will not allow our arguing to spoil my brother's wedding. 
A vase full of flowers crashed into the wall an inch from my head. You'll be out before dinner, or I will have you removed. I walked into the hall and closed the door behind me. Evelyn met me at the bottom of the stairs. Judging from her expression, she'd heard at least some of the argument. Hell, they'd probably heard it in Palermo. Not now, Ma, please. Yes, now. And you don't speak to your mother in that tone. She motioned to the sofa. I considered leaving the villa and returning to the States, but it'd do no good. They'd likely follow me. Here, at least I had my brothers to help run interference. I sank into the couch. Sorry, it's been a rough day. So I heard. She's right, you know. You've been acting like an ass since the girl arrived. There's nothing going on between me and Shauna. Evelyn pinched the back of my arm hard enough to bruise. What was that for? I saw you two slip away the night of the gala. I see the way she looks at you. Either you're stupid or blind or both. I raised you better than this. You have a good Sicilian girl, a good Catholic girl who loves you. What do you do? Go off with a little tart and break Nicolina's heart. Evelyn did the sign of the cross and walked into the kitchen. You're driving your mother to drink. Ma, come on. Nicolina and I would kill each other if we were married. She held up a bottle of whiskey to make sure I saw what she'd poured. That is passion. It means lots of babies. It's not passion, and I don't want babies. Evelyn knocked back the whiskey and refilled her glass. No man wants babies until they come, and then he loves them. Look at your brother Joe. As soon as she said his name, she crossed herself, kissed her fingers, and held them to heaven. Look at Gabriel and that sweet angel Ella. Do you think he regrets being her father? I bet he regrets screwing her crazy mother. I dodged the shot glass. What is it with women throwing shit at me today? Cursing at your mother. You better go to confession. She hung her head and started to cry. I'd seen this routine before. Like Nico, Evelyn could call up tears when needed and wield them like weapons. I hoisted myself up and walked to her. She held out her hands and shook her head, but I drew her close and kissed her brow. I'm sorry. Your father is dying. He just wants to see you boys married and happy. I know, Ma, I know. Chapter 7, Shauna. The sea breeze softened the afternoon heat. Unlike the hazy early summer sky in New Orleans, the heavens over Sicily remained a consistent deep blue. And Donna Fugata Castle? My God, the images I'd seen on the internet didn't do it justice. Like the villa, the pale stone walls reflected the sunlight and chased away the shadows. For the first time since my plane had touched down, I felt at ease. Dahlia threw her arm around my shoulders. We're going to the stone maze. Do you want to come? You guys go ahead. I'm going to wander around and get some more pictures. Marco had remained by my side, and uncharacteristically quiet since leaving the villa. I'll keep an eye on her. Dahlia glanced between us. Okay. I'll call when we're on our way back. Leo motioned to me. Stay in the tourist areas with Marco. Don't wander the property alone. Will do. Marco watched them go before turning to me. What are you thinking? Honestly, that I'd give my left arm for someone to look at me the way Leo looks at her. I could imagine them happily married. They were perfect for each other. You realize Enzo gazes at you like you're the Mona Lisa. His words hit me in the solar plexus. And I've seen you stare at him the same way. He shrugged. I grinned, not because I found any of this amusing, but because I needed to get off the topic before I did something humiliating like cry. Your brother's a jackass. Agreed. But that only makes him sexier, no? I laughed and lied through my teeth. No. We wandered along the walkways in silence. Me stealing photos of everything and nothing in particular, and him scanning the area as if waiting for an armed gunman to leap around the next corner. I couldn't ignore the topic another minute. How much danger are we in? And don't treat me like I'm stupid. I know someone fired a gun near Enzo and me this morning. It's hard to say. Believe it or not, this sort of thing doesn't happen here. 
You say it like people in Ragusa don't own weapons. His spine stiffened. Violent crime is far rarer here than in the States. I've seen plenty of mafia movies that say differently. I'd meant it as a joke, but his expression told me I'd insulted him. I didn't mean to offend you. You didn't. He shoved his hands in his pockets and looked away. I rested my arms on the balcony railing and soaked in the history. The Baroque carvings of angels and gargoyles intrigued me. From a distance, they looked beautiful. But up close, their bulging eyes and toothy grins took on a sinister quality. They reminded me of the elder Marchionis. Shauna, Enzo stood on the lawn and waved his arms over his head. Stay there, I will be right up. Great. I debated going inside the building and hiding. Marco leaned closer. Remember, Bella, you're the Mona Lisa. And he's a jackass. I elbowed his ribs. Sounds like a match made in heaven, Marco winked. On that note, I'll go find Leo and Dahlia. Please, I'm begging you, don't leave me alone with Enzo. I knew I must sound like a lunatic, but I needed him to stay and act as my human shield. Talk to him. Marco kissed my cheek, turned, and walked away. The traitor. The ghoster nodded to his brother on his way to me. I'm glad I found you. Where are Dahlia and Leo? They went to the stone maze. I continued to stare at the horizon. He leaned against a heavy marble column. Is the castle of the woman who fled everything you hoped it would be? It smells musty. No matter how much work they do, it's still a shithole. They should level the entire thing to the ground. I mocked Nico's earlier words. I couldn't help myself. I guess I left myself open for that one. He clasped his hands behind his back. Yeah, you did. I ended things with Nicolina, once and for all. She's returned to Paris. I can't say I'm sorry to see her go. I glanced at him. Big mistake. The way he stared caused my heart to skip a beat. Can we go to dinner in town? I'd like to spend some time together. Get to know each other better without so many interruptions. He asked me out? My racing heart betrayed my better judgment. I'd never admit it to anyone. But I wanted to get to know him. The real him, not the person he pretended to be around his family. It would be so easy to go to dinner and laugh and see where the night led. But we'd made plans once before, and he'd hurt me. Why? Because the best man and maid of honor should be cordial. He grinned and offered his arm. I wasn't quite ready to let him off the hook. Not yet. You're not the best man. Leo is, and I am being cordial. Yes, but you've been upset since you arrived. I'm tired and jet lagged. You're angry and hurt because I am an ass who canceled our date without an explanation. Let's start again. Truce. He extended his hand this time. This is a bad idea, a very bad idea. But how can I refuse those freaking eyes? Truce, I took it, and he tightened his grip. But don't push your luck. Call Delia and tell her you're taking a taxi back to the villa. Of course he pushed his luck. Why am I taking a taxi back to the villa? He flashed me the famous Marchioni smile. You're going to dinner with me. The air left my lungs, and my heart fell to my feet. Was he embarrassed of me? Sure, I was almost a foot shorter and a few pounds heavier than Nicolina, but still. You're asking me to lie to Dahlia and sneak around with you in secret? He furrowed his brows. I thought it would be easier to enjoy ourselves without involving my family. Easier to dump me again. Is it too much to ask for a man who will put me first? On second thought, I should go find Dahlia. Maggie wanted to go over some wedding plans, and Marco is here somewhere waiting for me. I really am rusty at this. He drew a breath and stared at the ceiling. Let me try again. Walk with me while you wait.
You'll never find them in the maze. What is it about this man that makes me want to break all my rules? I'd ended actual relationships for less, but I wanted to give him another chance. He seemed so cocky one minute and so earnest, almost lost, the next. All right. I followed him to the ground level. We walked along an unpaved path toward the maze, but I couldn't enjoy the scenery with the uncomfortable silence hanging between us. What really happened in Ragusa? Marco had confirmed my suspicions, but I wanted to see if Enzo would be honest with me. I can't say for certain where the sound came from. He offered me a ghost of a smile. We're all stressed out between my father's health, the wedding, and the business. But I trust your judgment. If you believe it was a gunshot, I'm inclined to agree. Holy non-answer, Batman. Mm-hmm. We both live in New Orleans. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who knows gunshots when I hear them. Enzo glanced over the lawn. No one in Ragusa would fire on a Marchioni. You'll see at the wedding. The people here treat us like celebrities. I didn't doubt it. The family's name appeared on everything from the school to the local clinic. I was thinking about what you said earlier about the business. I meant what I said. I think you should take over for your father, if that's what you truly want. His eyes widened. But rather than replying, he turned his face toward the sun and aside. Getting nowhere except frustrated, I went for a different angle. How's your dad? I was surprised when Maggie said he was making the trip to Sicily. Enzo dipped his chin. He doesn't want to go back to the States. I think he came home to die. I'm sorry, that has to be hard on all of you. I didn't care for Papa Joe but Enzo's expression chipped away at the wall around my heart. He sat beneath a tree and motioned for me to join him. I used to play here when I was a kid. Did you grow up in Ragusa? I seated myself a safe distance from him and pulled my knees to my chest. Until we moved to the States the summer before I started second grade. After that, we spent summers at the villa. Sometimes we'd come and ski Mount Etna in the winter. How about you? Have you always lived in New Orleans? We'd talked for hours, but somehow avoided the topic of our families. Looking back, we'd spent most of the time flirting or talking about easy stuff. Tired of dancing around the hard topics, I decided to lay it all out there for him. I was born in Chicago. My mom and I moved from Florida after my dad left us when I was seven. He cocked his head. Divorce? More like he went out for donuts one Sunday and never came back. At such a young age, you must have been devastated. Enzo squeezed my hand. It's not something I really ever got over. I hadn't spoken about my father in years. It surprised me I could discuss it with him and not get choked up. I still wonder where he is and what he's doing. I don't know if he's alive or dead. He could have a whole new family. He softened his voice. Wherever he is, he's missing out on the honor of knowing the remarkable woman you've become. I'd never been one to take compliments. But rather than argue, I allowed myself a moment to enjoy it. Thank you. I believe I was the only kid in my graduating class whose parents were still married. It's the biggest difference I saw between growing up here and in the States. Enzo brought my hand to his lips. When did you move from Florida to New Orleans? My sophomore year of high school. It must have been tough to leave your friends behind. Yeah, but that's when I met Maggie. Her family basically adopted me. My mom worked a lot of late nights at the hospital. Is your mother a doctor? Score one for not assuming mom's a nurse. Yes, but she retired last year and moved back to Florida with her new husband. I turned into the breeze and drew a breath. I had my doubts, but I understand why Gabe and Maggie wanted to get married in Sicily. It is beautiful. It has its charms. Enzo pulled his buzzing phone from his pocket and glanced at the screen. I should take this. I nodded. Walking away, 
Enzo shouted into the phone in Italian. The language amused me. Depending upon the volume, it either came across as angry or seductive. No one deadpanned in Italian. He returned to my side. We need to go. What, why? What about the others? I rummaged through my bag for my phone. They're on their way back to the villa. He offered his hand. I stood unassisted and wiped the sand from the seat of my pants. They left without me? That was Leo. I told him I would bring you back. Enzo grabbed my hand and dragged me along. I struggled to keep up. Slow down. I apologize, but I have to get back to the house. My father is ill. The air left my lungs as if he'd punched me in the stomach. He opened the car door for me and leaned close. Will you forgive me for canceling our dinner plans once again? There's nothing to forgive. Let's go. Chapter 8, Enzo The drive back to the villa seemed to take forever. Questions pinged around inside my head. How sick is my father? What did it mean for the wedding? How will Ma take the news of Pops? I'd held Shauna's hand since we'd left the castle. The physical contact helped take the edge off my panic, but I couldn't help but worry how this would end. She'd admitted she hadn't gotten over her father leaving her. As much as I wanted to believe things would work out between us, I knew I'd eventually be forced to do the same. Enzo, she licked her lips. Whatever happens, I'm here if you need to talk. Thank you. That means more to me than you know. I tossed my phone to her. Gabe had the security code changed this afternoon. Call and tell him to open the gate. She fumbled with the cell. Gabe, this is Shauna. We're in the drive. The heavy wrought iron crept open, and I prayed the few precious seconds wouldn't cost me the chance to say goodbye to my father. I eased the car down a long drive and cut the engine. I need to go inside. She enveloped my hand in hers. I'm here for you when you need me. The gesture had nothing to do with lust or wanting something from me. Despite my disappearing act, she gave herself freely. I couldn't remember the last time someone had shown me such tenderness. You humble me. A hint of a smile crossed her lips. I sincerely doubt that's possible. Leo stood at the front door waiting for me. I sat frozen in place. Shauna released my hand. Go, I'll be here when you're finished. I climbed from the car and followed Leo inside. Normally, my parents used the master on the second floor. They'd opted to sleep downstairs on this trip because of some bullshit about the honeymooners needing the larger room. I'd known the real reason, but until that moment, I'd ignored it. My father could no longer handle a simple flight of stairs. How bad is it? I hated the way my voice quivered. He's doing better, for now. They gave him something to help open his airways. Leo led me into a small sitting room. The stubborn fool wasn't using his oxygen. He collapsed, but he's breathing easier now that the docs have him using the face mask. I pushed the door open and scanned my brother's faces. Dante, the youngest, appeared to daydream near the window. Gabe and Marco stood with their heads together, whispering. Judging by their rigid posture, they weren't discussing our father. Where's Ma? I glanced at Leo. Resting upstairs. He leaned against the doorframe. I turned toward the bed and struggled to make sense of the situation. Giuseppe Marchione was the strongest man I knew. He'd run the family and the business with the ruthlessness of a third world dictator. But not even Papa Joe could defeat stage four small cell lung cancer. He'd lost weight over the previous months, but I hadn't realized how gaunt he'd become. His skin sagged between his bones like linen draped over furniture in the summer house. I'd spoken to him yesterday and commented on his tan from days in the Mediterranean sun. But today, the disease had stolen his color. I sat on the edge of the bed and took his hand. My father opened his eyes slowly, like the slight movement took too much energy. Lorenzo. Hey, Pops. I tightened my grip. Gabe's voice rose over the hiss of the oxygen machine. I don't give a shit what you have going on in New Orleans. You're staying here with the rest of the family. Hey, Cal. Marco glared. I'm expected in the office on Monday. Someone has to run the company while you're here. We are staying, Gabe said. We all are. Leo shook his head. No can do. I have to get back to your bar and my restaurant. Plus, Dahlia needs to get home to her son. Hold it down, 
Pops is trying to rest, Dante said in a hushed tone. Despite the noise, my father had drifted back to sleep. He doesn't seem to mind the racket. I released his hand and stood. Why are we staying in Sicily? I got a call from Tommaso Abruzzo. Gabe folded his arms. He claims the Lazios shot at Enzo in the old city as a warning. The news didn't surprise me, but the fact I'd sent Nico packing gave me pause. Sure, our argument had happened after the incident in Ragusa, but I doubted a pissed off Principessa would help the situation. After all, hell hath no fury like a jilted woman. What about the wedding? Dante asked. Is it safe to have everyone in one place? I have a hard time believing they cause trouble at a family gathering, let alone a church. Gabe dragged his hand on his face. But I'll have extra security on the limos and during the ceremony. You're going through with it without Pops? I couldn't imagine any of us saying our vows without him present. It seemed wrong. The doctor said he'll be better once he's had some rest and oxygen. Gabe sighed. Worst case scenario, he has a wheelchair. I doubted my father would be seen in public unless he could walk on his own, but I kept my mouth shut. I'm not sure I trust the Abruzzos. They've had a beef with the Lazios for decades. Whoever is responsible, they crossed the line when they fired around Shauna. I'd feel better if someone accompanied her and Dahlia back to the States, Leo said. Enzo will return to the States with Dahlia, Jesse, and Shauna. Gabe stiffened his spine and stared at me. I need the rest of you here. As Pops is so fond of reminding us, power only holds when our enemies know we are strong. His insult knocked me for six. I'm dispensable? Gabe's frown deepened. None of us are dispensable. Then why send me home when Leo clearly wants to go? I struggled to keep my voice down. I'd taken this shit from our father my entire life. I refused to take it from Gabe. Papa Joe pulled his oxygen mask from his face. Because you are too hot-headed to negotiate and too soft to do what must be done if talks fail. I turned to my brothers for support, but they looked away. The old, familiar feeling of standing on the outside, watching while my family banded together, took a stranglehold on my heart. No matter how hard I worked or how much I accomplished, they would never treat me as an equal. Nico was right. It'll take a miracle for my father to be proud of me. When are we to go? After the wedding. My father raised his hand a few inches and motioned to my brothers. Leave us. I waited until we were alone and walked to his bedside. Your mother tells me you're sniffing around Maggie's friend. He wheezed with each word. Escort her to New Orleans and end it. You will make amends with Nico. Like how? I wanted to argue, to tell him my personal life was mine and mine alone. Not here. Not now. Not with him like this. Promise me you'll. A series of gut-wrenching coughs stole his breath. Securing his oxygen mask in place, I whispered, Get some rest, Pops. Shauna. I joined Maggie by the glass doors. How is Papa Joe? Her eyes were red, but she smiled when I approached. He's better. The doctor came with an oxygen tank. He didn't think he needed it, so he left his at home. They gave him something to help him breathe. He's sleeping now. Thank goodness. I sagged against a column. Chloe, Maggie's nine-year-old niece, drew flowers on the driveway with sidewalk chalk, while her baby brother Ryan tried to catch butterflies in a net. We're moving the wedding to tomorrow morning. Everything's ready. We just have to show up. Maggie knelt beside Chloe, helping her finish drawing a flower. Why not do it here? It has to be in a Catholic church to be recognized. And I thought we had a lot of rules. My father had insisted that I was raised Jewish, though I hadn't set foot in a synagogue since he'd left me and my mom. She grinned at the children. Who wants to go swimming? The kids abandoned their projects and rushed through the door. I moved slower, trying to sort out the events of the day. For a wannabe private investigator, I had a low drama tolerance. Unfortunately, the Marchionis seemed to cultivate it. Are you okay with changing the date? Yes, 
I'd rather rush it than postpone, in case he takes a turn for the worse. Besides, Evelyn would be mortified if I waddled down the aisle nine months pregnant. She called to the kids. Go get your suits on. Uncle Marco said he'd take you in the pool. How do you do it? I slid onto a bar stool. Do what? Maggie pulled two bottles of water out of the fridge and handed one to me. You're so calm. She shrugged. I'm used to big families. Nothing ever goes as planned when there's more than two people involved. Truer words. I could see her point. Raising four kids that weren't hers with one of her own on the way could make even the most rigid planner learn to go with the flow. Heck, I'd become more flexible by osmosis. I have a favor to ask. Anything for you. Don't go into town without one of the guys with you. There's some trouble with Nicolina's brothers. The Lazios? Maggie's eyes widened. Before she could reply, the kids tore through the house with Marco hot on their heels. He'd make a hell of a dad one day. Out of all the brothers, he seemed the most normal. Too bad I don't like normal. She walked to the slider and watched Chloe and Ryan in the pool. Maggie, the Lazios are a known mafia family, I know. You don't seem surprised Enzo was dating a mob princess. Neither was I, but Maggie and I were different. She'd turned into a mom while I'd spent years learning the inner workings of New Orleans fringe elements. Gabe and I are postponing our honeymoon. Papa Joe is too sick to travel, and Evelyn needs help taking care of him. That she'd dodged my question concerned me, but I let it go. Enzo said that he thinks Joe wants to die in Sicily. He may be right, she swallowed hard. That's not the only reason you're staying, is it? She met my gaze for several heartbeats before lowering her voice. This place has tighter security than Fort Knox. Gabe wants us here until he clears up a few things. My brain kicked into hyperdrive. Enzo said he'd grown up with the Lazios. The families were close. Is Maggie about to marry into the mafia? Does she know? Has Gabe confided in her? Is it really safer here than at home? Yes, but from the sound of it, we'll be on lockdown. Smiling, Maggie watched Gabe join Marco and the kids outside. Strange she could still find joy, given our current topic of conversation. It's probably best if you go home after the wedding. I have no idea how long we'll be here. Enzo stormed into the kitchen and pulled a bottle of whiskey from the cabinet. It seems I'll be the one escorting you back to New Orleans. You? Why isn't he staying with the rest of the family? I glanced between them and settled on Maggie. Indefinitely? With the kids? What about their school? It's not ideal, but we'll manage, she shrugged. I should help Gabe with the munchkins. I nodded because what else could I do? I couldn't exactly grill her with Enzo standing there brooding like he belonged in a James Dean movie. We'll talk soon. She gave me a weak smile and stepped outside. Enzo motioned to the whiskey and raised an eyebrow. Please, I joined him in the kitchen. I'm so freaking confused. Why does a known mob family have issues with the Marchionis? He filled two glasses. Maggie told you that? I lowered my voice. I helped her research your family for her article. You'd be surprised the amount of information readily available on the internet and in public records. He downed his scotch. Do you really need to ask why? You're a private investigator in New Orleans. A PI in training. I grabbed my glass and knocked back half the contents. Regardless, you know half the city is corrupt and the other half profits from it. This situation isn't much different. While he hadn't come right out and said the words, I'd heard enough to put the pieces together. The Marchionis might not be card-carrying members, but they were involved in the mafia. Shouldn't everyone leave Ragusa? If you dumping Nicolina started a mob war, he stared into his glass. There's more to it than that. Gabe is trying to break ties with the old families. It's causing some issues. Shit, Enzo. I groped for the counter to stay upright. 
I don't, I don't know how to respond to that. I've said more than I should have. I trust your discretion. I met his gaze and my breath caught. I don't know what I expected to see in his expression, but the pain in his eyes took me off guard. I would never betray your trust. I need to make some calls. He glanced away. Can we have that dinner date when we return home? The abrupt change of subject made my head spin. As much as I wanted to accept, I couldn't help but worry what getting involved with a mafioso would do to my already chaotic life. However, I couldn't bring myself to turn him down. Not when he seemed so damned defeated. Of course, he went upstairs, leaving me alone to think. I didn't want to leave Maggie here with these people, but I certainly didn't intend on hanging around. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end, and I turned to find Evelyn staring. The woman poured herself a drink, refilled my glass, and set it in front of me. Everything all right? As well as can be expected. Thankful for something to do with my hands, I sipped the whiskey. How is Mr. Marchione? Stubborn as always. Evelyn watched her family play on the other side of the glass door. Is there anything I can do to help with the wedding plans? You can stay away from Lorenzo. She spoke without wasting a glance in my direction. I nearly spilled my drink. We're friends. I'm not interested in anything more. I can't decide if you are lying to me or to yourself. I couldn't form a thought, let alone a reply but I had no intention of allowing anyone to tell me what I could or couldn't do. Excuse me, I need to go change. Evelyn raised her glass, nodded, and turned her attention back to the pool. Chapter 9, Enzo The house hardly resembled my childhood home. Hired staff moved furniture from the living and dining rooms. Others cleaned and hung lights throughout the room and patio. The caterers turned the kitchen into ground zero to prepare breakfast and the wedding dinner. I did my part by staying out of the way. The groom had either caught Maggie's morning sickness or suffered from a hellacious case of nerves. Either way, he needed sustenance to get through the next few hours. I loaded two plates with eggs, potatoes, and sausage, one for myself and one for Gabe. Allow me to help you. A pretty female caterer carried carafes of coffee and juice upstairs to the bedroom. Grazie mille, could you? I nodded to the door. She turned the knob, stepped inside, and stopped. Eyes wide and mouth hanging open, she stared at my half-dressed brothers. Oh, scusi, sorry, scusi. Thanks for bringing my breakfast. Marco reached for a plate. I swiveled and sidestepped him. Get your own, this one's for the groom. Thanks, man. Gabe took the plate, glanced at it, and handed it to Marco. Maybe just toast. I'll get it for you. The caterer all but ran for the door. I clamped a hand on Gabe's shoulder. If you're having second thoughts, I'm fine. He growled and walked to the window. Leo moved beside him. Joe was just as nervous, remember? Gabe nodded. Memories of my older brother tightened my chest. With an eight and a half year age difference between us, we hadn't been close, but I'd looked up to him like he was a fucking superhero. Joe Jr. had everything I wanted. My brother's respect, my mother's adoration, and my father's approval. Now, they'd given him my dad's name. How much more could my parents have done to tell the world he was their favorite son? I hated myself for holding on to grudges against a dead man. How could I let them go when my family used me as a stepping stool to polish his pedestal? We were all kids on his wedding day, I muttered half to myself. Leo laughed. Joe wasn't old enough to drink when he got married. I thought we would have to tie him up and drag him to the altar. He did okay, Gabe cleared his throat. Rebecca was an amazing woman. So was Maggie. You guys are great together. Leo embraced the groom. You got this. Marco said, just think. Two more hours and Ma will let you two sleep in the same bed. The caterer returned with a plate of toast, a sparkling water, and a handful of tablets. These are ginger and papaya. They help upset stomachs. Thanks. I took the plate to Gabe. Eat so we can get you dressed. He smirked and shoved a piece of toast into his mouth. Evelyn burst through the door, sending Dante and Marco into a panic to get their pants on. Why aren't you ready? Gabe's nauseous. 
Leo tried for a smile, but ended up looking guilty. Of course he is. Now get dressed. The limo is downstairs. We can't keep the priest waiting. She put her hands on her hips and waited until we shot into action. Have you seen Maggie? Gabe buttoned his shirt. Yes, and she's dressed. Best not keep her waiting. Evelyn took his face in her hands, mushed his cheeks until his lips pushed out and then slapped him gently. So handsome, just like your father. Five minutes later, we piled into the limo and headed for the church. Leo and Dante stared out the window. Marco fumbled with his phone. Gabe bowed his head and appeared to pray, but I sat back and enjoyed the show. Dante, the youngest of us, downed a bottle of water. Are we absolutely sure it's safe to have our entire family in one place? Leo's shoulders tensed. We have security at the church. I'd never seen my little brother so worked up. Dante generally kept to himself unless video games or food were involved. Raising my chin, I said, the Lazios won't cause trouble today. Honor among thieves. They turned to me, but no one spoke. What? I held my hands up. Relax, this is supposed to be a joyous day. Gabe sat back and scratched his jaw. I'll relax when everyone's inside. Business should have waited until after the ceremony. You had to know the families wouldn't be happy to hear we're breaking ties. Leo narrowed his eyes. What's done is done. And yet, it's far from over. Have you given any thought to who will take over our territory? This isn't the time, Enzo. Leo folded his arms as if daring me to speak. Gabe rolled his head from side to side to relieve the tension. It's not for us to decide. I plan to sell the villa and any holdings we have in Sicily as soon as we return to New Orleans. What the fuck is he thinking? This is our ancestral home. The people here count on us. They'll learn to count on someone else. This from Leo, who regarded me like I was something on the bottom of his shoe. You're so eager to go legit, you destroyed generations of hard work in this community? Gabe met my gaze and cocked his head, as if considering what I'd said, or more likely, wondering what it'd take to shut me up. The limo came to a stop at the stairs of the Cathedral of St. Giovanni Battista. The enormous front doors stood open, welcoming the wedding party. Family and invited guests waited near the entrance for the groom to enter, while locals and curious tourists filled the remainder of the square. You have quite a crowd. I scanned the faces and blew out a sigh of relief. Nico hadn't shown. Thank Christ. My brothers and I formed a semicircle around the door and waited for Gabe to emerge from the car. I had to admit, we were a handsome bunch in our black Armani tuxes and crisp white shirts. Gabe stood and swung his arms like a prize fighter. Let's do this. I slapped his back. Last chance to run. If I run, Mom will tackle me and drag me back. He flashed me a grin. Leo stepped forward. Ready? Gabe nodded and walked inside the church. Family and friends filed past me, but I hung back and waited for my parents' limo to move forward. Now, more than ever, my father needed to appear strong. The door opened, and Zach, my oldest nephew, stepped out. The kid wore the same cut and style tux as the rest of us. Someone had slicked his curls back, but the humid air made one or two spring back to life. He reminded me of his father at 16. A pang of grief threatened to bring tears to my eyes. Chloe bounced out of the limo in a puff of white silk and tulle. Her long dark hair hung in ringlets down her back. She waved to the crowd and twirled in her dress. Those gathered rewarded her with cheers and applause. She's such a ham. Evelyn emerged carrying Ella, Gabe's infant daughter, both dressed in ice blue. Ryan came next in a miniature tux. He took one look at the crowd and froze in place. I moved forward and took the little guy's hand before he could dart back into the car. My mother moved aside, and my father, Giuseppe Marchioni Sr., stepped from the limo. The old goat couldn't get out of bed the day before, but hell would rent space to penguins before he let his people see him in a wheelchair. The locals knew him as Papa Joe. They called his name and cheered, prompting the tourists to follow suit. My family had supported this city for as long as anyone could remember. We enjoyed notoriety in New Orleans, but here, we were loved. Who will take care of these people when we leave? The Lazios? The Abruzzos? Not fucking likely. Zach carried Ella into the church, followed by my parents and Ryan. I waited with Chloe by the door for the bride to arrive. The third limo pulled up, and my niece bolted toward it, along with half the crowd. Shit. Chapter 10 Shauna Wow, 
Is that the church? I pressed my hand to the window and stared at the beautiful stone building. Unlike many of the Baroque cathedrals in Italy, this one had a simple elegance. Yellowish tan blocks, heavy medieval style doors, and bells. My God, the bells rang loud enough to rattle my molars. Look at the crowd, Maggie leaned forward and gasped. Where did they all come from? Dahlia chuckled. They came to see Papa Joe. And they came to see the beautiful bride of Gabriel Antonio Tommaso Marchioni. Jesse, Gabe's cousin, grinned. I'm going to throw up. Maggie sank back from the window. Breathe deep. You can do this. I rubbed her shoulder and prayed the security Gabe had hired would do its job. I wish my mom was here. Maggie's voice quivered. She'd be here if it weren't for the flu. I'd gone to visit Nadine when I'd learned she wasn't making the trip. Faking an illness was right up the woman's alley. Imagine my surprise when she'd opened the door looking like an extra from The Walking Dead. Leo said Gabe caught your morning sickness. Dahlia laughed. Maggie paled. Is he okay? I'm sure it's nothing, I pointed. Look, honey, there's Chloe. Focus on her. Ready? Jessie signaled for the attendant. Maggie sank back into her seat. I need Gabe. He's waiting for you inside. Let's go see him. Jessie eased out of the limo. Dahlia followed her. I squeezed Maggie's hand. I'll deny saying this, but you and Gabe are perfect for each other. Let's get you inside. I just need a minute. Waiting by the limo, I worried Maggie had changed her mind. I scanned the crowd and caught sight of Enzo shouting from the steps. A handful of people broke through security and surged toward the limo. Several large men in dark suits followed in an attempt to corral them, but failed miserably. Jesse and Dahlia scrambled back inside the car. The only thing between the rushing crowd and the limo was Chloe. The girl stared wide-eyed at the stampede. A flash of metal caught my eye and my brain immediately registered, gun. Chloe, I yelled over the clanging of bells and voices. With no time to think, I hurtled myself toward the girl and scooped her into my arms. Chloe screamed and clung to me like a spider monkey. I had to get her to safety, but I couldn't decide on the church or the car. If shots rang out, the driver could get everyone to safety. But the church was built like a fortress. It'd stop any flying bullets. Dahlia threw the door open. This way. I tightened my grip on the girl and sprinted toward the limo. We landed in a heap of silk and tulle, but Chloe was safe, if not a little freaked out. Are you okay? Eyes as big as saucers, she nodded. What's going on out there? Maggie glanced between me and the tinted windows. The crowd's a little rambunctious. I would have told her more if I'd known for certain I'd seen a gun, and not some schmuck's watch reflecting the sunlight. The twin wrinkles between Maggie's brows deepened, but she didn't press for more information. I couldn't tell what was happening outside. From the looks of it, the crowd had doubled in size, but only a handful of people remained close to the limo. The side door opened and most, if not all of us, screamed. Chuckling, Enzo placed his hand on my shoulder. It's all right, everything's under control. Are you sure? I swallowed hard. He leaned into the limo, likely to get a look at the rest of the women. Security is holding everyone back, but we should get inside now. Maggie nodded. Chloe grinned at her uncle. You saved us. Shauna did the saving. He helped her from the car and knelt to eye level. Are you ready to be the flower girl? She threw her arms around his neck and my freaking ovaries went into overdrive. Not only did I hear the telltale tick, tick, tick of my biological clock, the damned thing rang like an old fashioned telephone. And I didn't want kids, ever. I stood and smoothed my rumpled dress. Good job getting her out of the fray. You're stronger than you look. She's nearly as tall as you are. Enzo smiled at me like I'd descended from heaven in a golden chariot. Thanks, I think. 
I had to look away before I said or did something entirely inappropriate. And so I'm pretty sure I saw an F-I-R-E-A-R-M. Chloe rolled her eyes. I can spell, you know. Enzo's expression sent a shiver down my spine. He pressed his lips into a tight line, nodded a fraction of an inch in the girl's direction, then locked eyes with me. Message received. We'd talk about it later. Maggie stepped into the bright Sicilian sunshine, and the crowd cheered behind a wall of openly armed security guards. The diamonds around her neck and in her veil blazed against her pale blonde hair. Her dress was a classic mermaid style, ruched down the sides and accented with an antique brooch on a white satin ribbon. The chiffon jacket she wore gave her an elegant, almost demure look. Enzo cleared his throat. I'll take Chloe inside. Ready to get married? I handed Maggie a slightly bruised bouquet. Yes. And then I'm dragging his ass back to New Orleans as soon as possible. The bride plastered on a smile and waved to the crowd. Enzo. I stood between Leo and Dante at the altar. What the hell happened out there? Gabe whispered. Crowd got out of hand. Everyone's okay. I'd tell them everything, but not in the church. I had a feeling there'd be cursing and we weren't lightning proof. He reached behind Leo and tugged my arm. Are they okay? Yeah, four of the strongest women I've ever seen. I meant it. My hands hadn't stopped trembling, but the girls had pulled themselves together in no time. Even Chloe had seemed to take it all in stride. Jesse walked down the aisle first. We smiled. Sure, she looked amazing, but she was like a sister to us. The emotion started when Dahlia walked forward. Leo gasped, shifted in place, and cleared his throat. Muttering a few words that shouldn't be spoken in church, he dipped his chin. If I had any doubt how Leo felt about her, his little display cleared it up. Careful, or you'll be next. Can't happen. Leo fixed his eyes straight ahead. Can't, not won't. Interesting choice of words, but I didn't have time to ponder them. Shauna came next. I'm sure I wore the same shell-shocked expression as my brother. I couldn't put my finger on it, but something about her did it for me. She was shorter than my typical woman, her skin paler, her hair shorter, her breasts smaller. Still, Shauna's smile made my breath catch. I couldn't look away. Leo nudged me. Careful, or you'll be next. It'll never happen. Uh-huh. She's Jewish. Besides my strict anti-matrimony policy, my mother would have a coronary. Whoa. Leo leaned over and said something to Gabe. The groom tilted his head and met my gaze. A slight smile curved his lips before he turned his attention to the doors. Chloe danced her way to the front of the church, tossing rose petals as she moved. I didn't envy Gabe. This one would grow into a handful. Quick-tongued, funny, smart, and beautiful. My niece would bring him many sleepless nights. My God, Gabe whispered. I followed his gaze to the doors of the church. Silhouetted by the sunlight, Maggie shimmered with each step. When the doors closed, her smile replaced the sunlight. I leaned forward to see Shauna's reaction, but found her staring at me. I winked, and she covered her mouth, likely to hide her laughter. Italian women didn't blush the same as Americans. I loved her rosy cheeks. Leo nudged me again and motioned to Gabe, who had actual tears running down his cheeks. I'd flirt. Hell, I might fall in love given half a chance, but I'd never turn into such a sap. In typical Roman Catholic form, the ceremony went on and on and on. We stood, we knelt, we stood again, we prayed, we sang. We pretended to understand Latin and knelt again. By the time Gabe and Maggie marched down the aisle, I was in desperate need of food and a stiff drink. Leo skipped past Shauna and escorted Dahlia. I tilted my head and offered my arm. Shauna's smile rivaled the bride's. She looped her arm in mine, and we strode toward the doors. All was well until we reached the limo. The newlyweds were going at it like a couple of horny teenagers. Christ, I glanced at the other cars. I could see if there's room with my parents. No thanks. Shauna slid across the seat and removed her jacket. Joining her, I laid my head back and stared at the ceiling. I knew no rules for this situation. If Gabe and Maggie were dating, I'd bust his balls, but kissing his new wife seemed sacred. Damn it. What? Gabe pulled away, grinning. 
Nothing, sorry, forgot my cigarettes. You don't smoke. With all the sexy time going on in here, I might start. Ditto. Shauna raised her hand. Maggie straightened her dress. It's been a long morning. The reprieve lasted less than a minute before they locked lips again. I nudged Shauna's side. It's like watching two guppies. Gabe gave me the finger but continued to suck on Maggie's face. When in Sicily? Shauna tossed her bouquet aside, grabbed my lapels, and laid one hell of a kiss on me. I remember the taste of her mouth from the gala, sweet like wine. Did the Jewish girl take communion, or does she always taste like this? I let the thought go and pulled her against me. With her breasts pressed against my chest, I tangled my fingers in her short hair and tugged her mouth to mine. She made a noise that shot straight to my cock. Damn, how could I have forgotten the sound she'd made when I'd pinned her to the wall? I cupped her ass and tugged her into my lap. The voice in my head warned I was playing with fire, but the voice from my other head liked the heat. The car stopped. I opened my eyes to find the newlyweds staring as if we'd just cured cancer. What? It's okay for you two, but not us? Shauna's my friend. She's not a one-nighter, Maggie smirked. Gabe eyed me as he moved to the door and helped his new wife out. I bit back a smart-ass comment. While I agreed with him, I didn't appreciate the cock block. Shauna's sitting right here and can speak for herself. She moved off of me, exposing my raging hard on in the process. Gabe either didn't hear or ignored her. Already missing her touch, I ran my fingertips down her spine. I left something at the church. Ride with me? She glanced at the door so long I thought for certain she'd turn me down. Sure. Yeah? My stomach tightened. Yes, tightened, because it sure as hell didn't flutter. Unless you've changed your mind? She winked and I bit back a groan. This woman. The attendant glanced inside the car. Getting out, sir? Close the door. I spoke without taking my eyes off her. We need to go back to the church. Yes, sir. I removed my jacket and tie before the driver started the car. Come here. Maybe I should get out. People will know what we're doing. She gave me a sly grin. What are we doing? We're having a conversation. I brushed my knuckles across her cheek. Shauna shivered, but rather than melting into me, she squared her shoulders. Not to spoil the moment or ruin the mood, but I swear at least one of the people in the crowd had a gun. You probably saw one of our plainclothes security guards mingling with the bystanders. I feared she was right, but I needed to discuss it with Gay before I said more. What aren't you telling me? You know as much as I do. I won't know the details until the head of the security team debriefs us. Promise me you'll tell me what you find out? She nuzzled into my neck. Of course. God, I wanted her. But this wasn't the time or place to do it properly. We'd have to settle for another near miss. I wrapped my arm around her shoulders and tugged her close. This is such a beautiful dress. It would be a shame to wrinkle it. I think we already did. She whispered between placing soft kisses along my jaw. Hands trembling, I eased the zipper down her back until the strapless dress sagged, exposing her bare chest. If I died that very second, I'd have gone with a smile on my face. My God, she was stunning. No bra? Her hands flew to her breasts. Don't need one. Don't cover these. I pulled her hands away and captured her nipple with my lips. Shauna made a sound somewhere between contentment and impatience. That feels amazing. Take the dress off. I didn't give a shit about wrinkling the fabric. I needed to see her gorgeous body. We can work around it. She loosened my belt. Take it off, Shauna. Why? She tugged at my pants. The need to run my hands over every inch of her bare skin overwhelmed me. I shifted my weight and set her on the seat. Kneeling in front of her, I eased the dress down her body. Let me see you while I pleasure you. Shauna bit her lip, grinned, and burst out laughing. Not exactly the reaction I'd hoped for. Something funny? Pleasure me? Who says that? Apparently I do. This woman would be the death of me. She cut my face. Just hike up my skirt and do me. I sat back on my heels. You don't like oral? I love oral, but we don't have time for that. Nor do we have time to get totally naked. 
Is she kidding? I'd felt guilty for weeks that I'd gotten her off at the gala with a quick blowjob. If there was such a thing as a female blowjob, we could skip the reception, get a room at the hotel. I'm not missing my best friend's reception because you refuse to give me a quickie. She pulled her dress up and turned her back to me. Zip me. No, I folded my arms. Why must you be so difficult? At least let me taste you. There you go again with the cheesy romance novel lines. She struggled with the zipper. God damn it, Lorenzo, help me. You have a filthy mouth. I goaded her, but I enjoyed the way her eyes darkened and her fingers flexed, as if she wanted to claw me. Yeah? And you're a jerk. Zip my dress, or I will walk out of this limo bare-assed naked. I knew better than to grin, but I couldn't help myself. Bullshit. You'd never give me the satisfaction of winning. How do you figure that's winning? She brought new meaning to the expression, if looks could kill. Now, this is the sort of passion I could get used to. Arguing with Shauna was almost as much fun as foreplay. Almost. Because all I wanted was to see you naked. I chuckled, motioning for her to turn around. Chapter 11, Shauna. I checked my reflection, swollen lips, flushed cheeks. I looked like a woman who'd gotten lucky in the back of a limo. I brushed my hair, freshened my lip gloss, and smiled into the mirror. Good as new, or as good as it's going to get. I opened the door, but Maggie pushed me back inside. Are you okay? other than surviving another encounter with the world's most frustrating man? I'm fine, why? Enzo is outside brooding. He doesn't look like someone who just had sex. Let's just say he reminded me he was an ass before I exposed mine. She tilted her head, shrugged, and turned to the mirror. I used to say the exact same thing about Gabe. Half the time, I still say the same thing about Gabe other than the exposing my ass part. Maggie laughed. I haven't seen you this worked up about a man in forever. Enzo's a good guy, but a bit of a loner. Don't be so hard on him. I folded my arms. The only thing Enzo Marchioni is good for hangs between his legs. Too bad he has too many hangups to use it. Shoshana, Mary Margaret. I opened the door and left the bride to contemplate her brother-in-law's dick. I'd overreacted, and I knew it. But I'd thought he was as turned on as I was. I couldn't wrap my brain around why he'd turned down a quickie. He wouldn't have offered to go down on me if he had a hang up about car sex. As if his actions weren't confusing enough, I had this overwhelming sense of relief things hadn't gone further. I'd wanted him but I would have regretted it in hindsight. Marco grabbed my waist as I attempted to cross the dance floor. Grinning, he swayed back and forth to the music. Dance with me, Bella. Sure, why not? I sighed and fell in step with him. He spun me away before pulling me against his chest. I know you prefer my brother. Trust me, dancing with me will get his attention. I don't want his attention. I felt the lie in my gut. The truth was, I wanted him more than I cared to admit, even if he drove me absolutely nuts. He nodded at someone behind me. Mm-hmm, well, you have it. Before I could make sense of the situation, Marco twirled me into Enzo's waiting arms. He leaned close and whispered, dance with me and I'll tell you what happened before the ceremony. I couldn't read his expression, which worried me. Maybe that's why I generally felt so off kilter around him. I had no clue what he was thinking. I need to eat. Can we grab some food and find a quiet corner to talk? Of course. Enzo took my hand. Evelyn had arranged enough food to feed twice as many guests as the 40 to 50 at the reception. I chose a couple of large shrimp and some antipasto while Enzo filled his plate until it overflowed. He led me to a table on the far side of the terrace. We're flying out this afternoon with Dahlia and Jesse. He took a large bite 
closed his eyes and hummed. You should try the fish. I didn't want the damned sea bass. I wanted answers. Today? Shouldn't Leo be going with Dahlia? The security team found two armed men in the crowd outside the church. Leo is staying behind to help sort out the situation. I pushed my plate away. Was it the Lazios? It's too early to tell. He captured my chin between his thumb and forefinger and turned my face toward his. For a heartbeat, I thought he'd kiss me. But he simply pressed his brow to mine and closed his eyes. It's best if you don't speak about things you don't understand. Way to ruin a tender moment. Insulted, I pulled away. I understand enough about them to know they're mafia, just like the Marchionis. Don't believe everything you read online. His expression changed from stressed to easy breezy in a nanosecond. I'd never seen anything like it. I bet he could make a killing at the casinos. Then don't play me for an idiot. How much danger is your family in? Enzo took my hand. The gunshots were warnings. If they'd wanted someone dead, they would have succeeded. Some warning. Part of me wanted to get back to the party, but the other part wasn't ready to leave the little private bubble. Has this sort of thing happened before? Not since I was a child. I don't remember much. Just my father sending us to the States until things settled. He ran his thumb over my palm. Don't look so alarmed. Assassinations require approval of the council. The families have honor. Women and children are never involved. Never involved? I had been with him when the shots were fired. Not that I considered myself part of the family, but I was a woman the last time I'd checked. Are the Marchionis one of these honorable mob families? Enzo nodded. You're admitting it? I ignored the pain in my chest. Why? Because secrets can get people hurt. Frowning, he lowered his chin. I could all but feel him pulling away. I needed to keep him talking. If there's some sort of democratic process, how do you explain what happened in the old city and what could have happened today outside the church? I can't. There's always a risk. Bullets ricochet, but today? He sat back and dragged his hand over his face. Today could have ended very differently. I'd seen him wear the same crestfallen expression the day before. There was something else, something he wasn't telling me. Did something happen yesterday when you visited your father? I was ordered to escort you, Dahlia, and Jesse back to New Orleans. My brothers and father believe me too hot-headed to help with negotiations. He spoke as if the words tasted bitter. I nodded, though I didn't think of him as quick-tempered. It had taken the patience of Job to resist strangling Nicolina. That had to hurt. He looked away. It's nothing new. That doesn't make it right. Turning his face toward mine, I leaned in and brushed my lips across his. I shouldn't have done that here where anyone can see. Enzo tensed for a half second before pulling me closer. No one can see us here in the dark, but what I wouldn't give to have a night alone with you. Kissing a line from the corner of his mouth to his ear, I whispered, we were alone today. Yes, but you were being difficult. And believe it or not, you deserve better than a quick fuck in the backseat of a car. He gripped my hips and drew a shaky breath. You got me all worked up and refused to have sex because you thought I deserved better? I'd heard about men who made sure their partner's needs were met before their own, but I'd never encountered one. Enzo had taken it one step further and thought through the situation. Don't answer that, he furrowed his brow. Are you still angry? Honestly, I don't know. The independent side of me wants to be pissed that you decided what was best for me. But another part knows I would have regretted it. Regretted being with me? No, I would have had to walk in here and see your mother, knowing we'd had sex in the limo or missed the reception altogether. We'll be spending a lot of time alone when we return home. Enzo brushed his lips across the top of my shoulder. 
The certainty in his voice caused my warning flares to shoot off. I leaned back and met his gaze. I'm all for seeing more of you, but why do I get the feeling that's not what you mean? The muscle on the side of his jaw tensed. We pissed Nicolina off. We? What did I do? I didn't even speak to her. My voice came out breathier than I would have liked. She's jealous. I shook my head. That's ridiculous. She saw us together the night of the gala. I had no idea she was there. My pulse throbbed behind my ears. You think she'll come after me? Until today, I would have said no. Either way, I don't intend to leave your side until this is settled. He spoke as if it was a done deal. There you go again, making decisions for me. I waffled between punching him or kissing him again. Both. Yes, both sounds about right. Do I get a vote in this? Inside the house, people tapped silverware to their glasses. Enzo stood and pulled out my chair. You'll always get a say in what happens between us. We'll finish this conversation after the festivities are over. I had no idea how to respond to him. While I believed he believed what he said, I couldn't shake the feeling our definitions of a say in what happens were very different. Scarier still, I didn't hate the idea of him looking out for me. Wedged between Enzo and Marco, I watched the newlyweds smash cake in each other's faces and kiss it off. Maggie wiped the icing off her face and joined us. I'm beat. Gabe and I are going upstairs for a quick nap. You'll get a real honeymoon soon, sis. Enzo gave Maggie a quick hug. Shauna and I are leaving in a couple of hours. She glanced at me as if for confirmation. I'm not a huge fan of the idea of leaving you here, but I'd rather not be stuck on the compound indefinitely with Evelyn. I see. So Enzo is the lesser of two evils? Maggie started to say something else when Gabe swept her into his arms and carried her upstairs. I stared after them, amazed they seemed so happy with everything that was going on. What I wouldn't give to feel like that. I should go pack. Your room is next to the master. I'd give them a few minutes before you go up. Grinning, Enzo took my hand. Am I really the lesser of the evils? I'm not sure yet. Ask me again once we're back in New Orleans. I walked back to the patio in search of my cell. He followed me. That isn't much time to judge my wickedness. We could divert our flight to Paris for a week. Tempting, but Dahlia and Jesse will be on the plane. I scrolled through my voicemails. I had one from my mother, wishing me safe travels. A little late, Mom. The next message was from my boss. Shona. This is Alex. I need the video footage you shot before you left. You forgot to forward it to me. I wouldn't have called, but it's urgent. A second message from Alex had come in an hour later. Shauna, destroy the footage. The client isn't interested in pursuing a divorce. The third message was timestamped 20 minutes later. It's Alex again. I hate to do this over the phone, but I'm letting you go. I've hired your replacement and had your things sent to your home address. Don't come to the office. I replayed the message three times. I'd worked with Alex for almost four years, never had an issue. He'd praised my performance. Heck, he'd called me his go-to girl. This can't be happening. I sat and put my head in my hands. What's wrong? Enzo brushed his fingers through my hair. I lost my job. He fired me in a voicemail. What a prick. Was there a problem with you taking a vacation? You'll be back tomorrow. He didn't say why, only that he'd hired a replacement. Enzo knelt beside me. I'm sure you'll find another job. Judging by the way you've handled yourself here, you were born to be a PI. Thanks. There isn't much call for private investigators and training. I was planning to go to school, but never got around to it. I had gotten around to it, but
but thanks to my dyslexia, I had trouble untangling the letters enough to pass the exam. Cupping my cheek, Enzo turned my face toward his. I'm always hiring at the restaurant. You can work for me until you find something else. Are you serious? Yes, it's perfect timing. It'll give us more time together. Only a person who had never worried where their next meal was coming from would say something so thoughtless. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I wiped out my savings on this trip. I thought Gabe flew you in. I didn't feel right about it. As if being fired via voicemail wasn't bad enough, I sat explaining my problems to a gazillionaire mobster. You won't be homeless. Gabe's place in the quarter is vacant. Even with my job, I couldn't afford a three-bedroom townhouse worth a couple million. I shook my head to clear the fog. I'd survived tougher situations. I'd get through this one, too. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about living on the streets. My mom is my landlord, but she can't afford to support me forever. See, it's not so bad. I need to go pack. Enzo grabbed my hand. I meant what I said. Let's go somewhere. Paris, London, Tahiti, name the place. You can take some time for yourself. Is he serious? I can't find a new job from another country. I have to get home. I needed to get away from him before the waterworks started. I loved my job. More so, I loved Alex. I thought we were close. He'd treated me like a daughter except he didn't fire his daughters via voicemail. What had I done wrong? I needed to speak to him face to face. I needed off this damned island. I'm going to be busy when we get home. I don't know when I'll have time to date. Can I get an extension on the dinner rain check? Of course. Also, while I appreciate your offer to stay with you, I can't accept. Enzo snapped to attention quicker than a career soldier. Until I know you're safe, I'll be safe once I can put some distance between me and the mob. I regretted the words as soon as they came out. Me getting canned wasn't his fault, nor was the situation with the Lazios. He sucked in a breath as if to argue, but hung his head on the exhale. I understand. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I wanted to throw my head back and scream. I need to slow things down, process everything that's happened, and decide what to do with my life. Enzo sighed. Don't we all, Shauna? Don't we all? Chapter 12, Enzo. I'd survived three decades on the planet with precious little female drama. That is, until Gabe and Maggie decided to have a destination wedding, since then, I had taken a ride on the fucking Estrogen Express to Nucking Footsville. My only hope of getting back on stable land? My brothers, God help me. Gabe and Leo sat on the patio with their heads together, speaking in Italian. I set a bottle of my father's Macallan single malt whiskey on the table, along with three lowball tumblers. We eyed the Lalique crystal decanter, bringing out the big guns. Is this business or female trouble? Gabe filled the glasses. Both. I took a sip and let the undertones of dried fruit and toffee soothe me. Shauna was fired from her job. I'd like to find a place for her in the company. Gabe nodded. Done, if she's interested. I'll talk to her. After her parting shot about distancing herself from the mafia, I doubted she'd accept the offer, but I had to try. Leo knocked back half his whiskey. What's really bothering you? I debated swearing them to secrecy like we'd done when we were kids, but... They were tight with Shauna's two best friends. I doubted either of them could keep quiet. She's into you. You're obviously into her. What's the problem? Gabe folded his arms. I drew a breath and said the verbal equivalent of tying my own noose. I can't close the deal. My brothers were born less than a year apart, and at times like this, they could have been twins. Both knuckleheads stared at me with their mouths hanging open. Leo ran his hand over his jaw. Ever think part of your problem is that you're referring to sex in business terms? Better yet, have you considered having an actual relationship instead of a series of one-nighters? Gabe deadpanned. 
I gritted my teeth and forced myself to remain in my chair. This is a bad idea. Leo motioned to my lower body. Is everything functional? Forget it. I stood and turned to go inside. Shauna chose that moment to walk outside, wearing skin-tight jeans and a tank top that hugged her teacup-sized breast. She spared us a glance inside. You guys looked deep in conversation. Don't let me interrupt. I just came out to tell you Dolly and Jesse are here. We're ready to go when you are. I sat because standing was no longer an option. I'll be right in. Shauna gave me an odd look, turned on her heel and walked back into the house. Gabe nudged Leo. His equipment appears to be working. Waffenkuvlo. The command to fuck off came out in a hiss. Leo smirked and replied in Italian. Between Nico and her family's bullshit, a lot has happened. Give her time. He's right. Shauna's tough, but she's a lot like Maggie. She knows what she wants, but overthinks it, Gabe said. I ran my hands over my head. It's not just the sex. She is hot one minute, cold the next. My brothers nodded in unison. Leo sighed and glanced out over the water. Patience is key. Follow her lead. She'll let you know what she wants. The hard part is shutting up and listening to her. You have to show her you're not going to hurt her. Gabe nudged my shoulder. Returning her calls is a good start. I've already apologized to her for that. He shrugged. I'm not sure she's over it. She calls you the ghost, or... Damn it. Leo grabbed the whiskey and nodded toward the door. Gabe, we should go say goodbye to Dolly and Jesse. I'll be right in. He turned to me and lowered his voice. Enzo, what Pop said to you the other day was bullshit. I stared. If he meant that, he should have said something then. Have you given any more thought to walking away? I poured myself another drink and sat back. Have you given any more thought to stepping down and letting me take the reins? Gabe glanced toward the house, drew a deep breath, and nodded. I'd like nothing more than to hand this entire ordeal over to you. But I can't. Can't or won't? Both. He finished his scotch. I won't because I'm afraid your concerns about what happens here will impact your ability to get us out. I can't because I'm already in too fucking deep to stop now. His candor shocked the hell out of me. Thanks for the honesty. We may not always agree, but I have your back. I appreciate that. You know, walking away from the restaurant doesn't have to mean you're leaving the family. I don't think our parents would agree with that statement. Maybe not, but think about it. He stood and clamped his hand on my shoulder. As for Shauna, if you don't plan to keep her around, let her go, or you'll end up hurting her. Tell me something I don't already know. Unsolicited brotherly advice or not, he had a point. But Gabe of all people should know nothing was that easy when your last name was Marchione. Our mother had come around with Maggie because she had no choice. The baby growing inside her made her part of the family. Knocking up Shauna wasn't an option. I downed the rest of my drink and followed him inside. We should get going soon. Where's Ma? She's upstairs. You know how she is when any of us leave home. Leo motioned to the closed guest room door. You should go say goodbye to Pops. It could be your last chance, hung unspoken in the air between us. But I couldn't bring myself to see my father. He'd said his piece, and he would never hear mine. The idea of leaving four kids, a worried bride, and my terminally ill father made me queasy, but I couldn't ignore the pull I felt toward Shauna. Time alone together would give us a fighting chance to figure out what was happening between us. It seemed my father had unintentionally given me a gift. Remember your promise. Maggie stared at Shauna as if trying to use a Jedi mind trick to force her to comply. She sighed. I'll use the bodyguard if I leave the house. Maggie embraced her and whispered something I couldn't hear. Shauna's cheeks flushed as she pulled away. Which house? I had a transcontinental flight to convince her to stay with me until we knew it was safe. I intended to use my time wisely. Gabe threw his arm over Shauna's shoulder. I'm sorry this wasn't the vacation you hoped for. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry about your honeymoon. We'll get a honeymoon. I'm just glad she married me. You should be. She glanced at me for a split second before Marco pulled her from Gabe. The goofball lowered his voice, but anyone within five feet could hear him. I'm jealous Enzo's the one taking you home, but you two are good for each other. Shauna nodded and hugged him tighter. 
You might want to work on your inside voice, Marco. I watched them pass her around like a collection plate and couldn't help but smile. I'm an idiot. She's already a part of the family. My mother just doesn't know it yet. My moment of levity vanished with each step I took toward the waiting vehicles. Gabe had ordered four SUVs for the trip to the airport. While I appreciated the security, two decoys and ten armed men were a bit much. I slid into the back seat of the nearest vehicle and waited while my family said their goodbyes, laughed, slapped backs, hugged, and started the process over again. Times like these always left me with an empty feeling, like I'd never quite fit in. Shauna joined me in the second SUV. Are you okay? I rested my arm across the back of the seat, the picture of calm, cool, and collected. I'm fine. What do you ask? She eyed me, clearly not buying my ruse. You didn't participate in the hug fest back there. All of them at once is a lot to handle. I wanted to hold her hand to tell her I understood her fears and I'd protect her with my life. However, when I met her eyes, my wants didn't matter anymore. Are you okay? She hitched a shoulder. Besides my mom, Maggie's my only family. After spending time with yours, I'm homesick. But for a home I've never had. I pulled her to my side and kissed the top of her head. We're quite a pair, aren't we? She snuggled closer. An only child wanting a family and one of six brothers feeling like an only child. Her words hit me right in the feels. You scare the shit out of me sometimes. How's that possible? Shauna tensed and pulled back to meet my gaze. I didn't think anything scared you. I huffed out a humorless laugh. Sweetheart. You're the first person I've ever met to see me and not the bullshit that comes with being a Marchione. I see that too, she frowned. You're not that hard to get to know. All someone has to do is pay attention. Once again, she stole my breath. You'd be surprised how few people have bothered. This has been part one of Highball and Chain. Written by Katherine M. Hurst. Narrated by Aaron Shedlock and Virginia Rose. If you enjoyed this audiobook, please subscribe to Catherine's channel where Enzo and Shauna's story continues. While you're there, be sure to check out Catherine's other novels.